welcome guys welcome everybody out there uh and welcome to saving throw that is the channel that you're on but we are the group from wild cards which is our uh friday night weekly savage worlds live stream here on saving throw and uh we uh the five of us are very big fans of savage worlds uh, we are actually in the midst this coming Friday. We will be uh, doing this, the series finale of our ETU campaign. So we are about to finish up that whole thing. But before this, we did five seasons of a Deadlands campaign. So Deadlands is a setting near and dear to our hearts, which is why we were super, super thrilled uh, to work with Pinnacle and uh, bring you guys this live stream during the Deadlands Kickstarter and kind of preview and show off some of the new things that you can expect to find in the new edition of Deadlands. Um, and on that note, if you don't know about the Deadlands Kickstarter, you should definitely, definitely check it out. You can enter exclamation mark Kickstarter in our chat panel and follow that link to it. Uh, the Kickstarter has been blowing through stretch goals. So uh, I don't know if you've been keeping up with it or if you haven't been keeping up with it. The most recent unlock, I believe we unlocked Metal Mages uh, as a write-up in the Companion. We just unlocked uh, the Horse Eater Adventure, I think, and we are on our way to some Ghost Rock, some physical Ghost Rock Nugget tokens, uh, which are really, really cool looking. So check that out. Uh, remember to use the uh, exclamation mark Kickstarter link and follow that. If you don't know about Deadlands, this is a great time to jump on. And if you do know about Deadlands, this is similarly a great time to come back into the fold. So uh, we are excited to have you folks here with us. Now, ordinarily, if you're familiar with wild cards, we do a lot of interactive bits during the show, uh, things that can be unlocked, things that can be donated for, for the characters. But this is a special stream that we're doing tonight. So uh, we will not be doing any of our usual unlocks or toasts or anything like that. Instead, we will be playing uh, a way that makes us uncomfortable here at the Wild Cards table because we're so not used to doing it. We will be playing <laughs> Rules as Written, which means primarily uh, for the players, uh, there's going to be less resources than you may be uh, used to normally. So uh, let's, let's see how you handle it. And then uh, also, I wanted to, to let you all know, I will be using a few uh, Doomtown cards to illustrate uh, standout NPCs or locations in this session. I could be wrong, so uh, don't, don't quote me on this. Instead, ask uh, Peg Jody or Peg Shane or Peg Clint or one of the people in the chat who are there to answer your questions. But um, there is a deal going through the Kickstarter as well. I believe if you're a backer, there is a way for you to get for $20 a core set of the Doomtown game and a uh, free deck tin to go along with it. So it's a great game if you want to learn how to play it. But if you are a marshal for uh, Deadlands, I will go one step further and say it is a great source of inspiration. Uh, it's a great way to pull out uh, visuals of locations, characters, and items at the game table. And uh, it makes a great adventure generator as well, just pulling random cards from your uh, Doomtown box and seeing if you can figure out ways to work them together. So and the most uh, recent expansion just has some, like, at least two really cool cards. One or two really cool cards in it. Uh, we're big fans here, so that is something to know. My name is Jordan Caves Callerman, by the way. I am the GM of Wild Cards, the Dean at ETU, but... For tonight's game, I will be returning to the Weird West and polishing up my Marshall's badge. I will be the Marshall for tonight's game, and we're very glad to have all of you here with us. Uh, is there anything else that we need to go over about the, uh, the, the Kickstarter or any of that, Dom, before we launch into seeing who everybody is? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, just check it out. It's really cool. There's, Definitely there's do. A, lot, a lot of stuff, and the, the next unlocks are really awesome, so I'm and looking if, forward to it. If the gremlins didn't chase them off, there should be a fair amount of Pinnacle folks hanging out in the chat, too, available to answer your questions about the Kickstarter, the setting, Suede, or uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure, you know, if you wanted to check up on them and see how, everybody, how they're doing, they'd be, they'd be more than happy to answer that question as well. Yeah, be nice to them. Please be nice to them. They're, they're nice folks. Um, I'd also like to say one final thing. Ordinarily here on Saving Throw, we have a beautiful in-person studio and a nice Carolina game table that we all sit around and stream with backdrops and whatnot. But due to um, you know the slight inconvenience of international pandemic, we are doing our best <laughs> to replicate the experience remotely. So this is not how we ordinarily do things on wild cards, but 
we were going to be damned if we were going to let an opportunity to show off some Deadlands slip by us. So studio or no, here we are. Uh, and we will also say, even though we're not handing out re-rolls for subs or anything like that, if you would like to sub to the channel, or if you'd like to use your monthly Twitch Prime or Amazon Prime sub to sub to the channel, please feel free to do so. We cannot see your names to call out subs as we normally can, but at the very end of the stream, anyone who subs during the stream, uh, Dom will have the list and we'll be sure to give you all a call out for that. So thank you guys for being here. And thank you to all my players for being here. Why don't we get you folks introduced? So... What I would like first, I would like uh, one by one for everybody to tell us your name, then your character's name, and tell us a little bit about your character, who you'll be playing this evening. And then after we do that, I'll have one final question for you folks. But let's go ahead and jump into that. And uh, who would like to start? I'll, I'll go. go. Oh, God. Oh, geez. There's two of us. <laughs> I, think I, heard, I think I heard Jordan just a millisecond before, so we'll go to Jordan. All right, everybody. Hi there. My name is Jordan Pridgen, uh, and the character I'm playing today is uh, Eldon Fallon. Eldon Fallon is a one-armed gunslinger who was sort of like a, he was a hotshot young trick shooter when he was younger, and then he lost one of his arms uh, and kind of went on a spiral there, started drinking heavily and getting involved in like crime and that sort of thing. And when he was basically like supposed to be hanged, uh, he ended up getting saved by, uh, by, I don't know how much detail you want us to go into. Say, yeah, Joshua Chamberlain. Yeah, uh, Joshua, Joshua Chamberlain. Chamberlain himself, the, uh, the president of Empire Rail. Mm -hmm. That's right, Empire Rail, not Union Blue, Empire oh. Rail. So uh, he was pulled on as a uh, as an employee of Empire Rail, and uh, he's gone around, kind of pulled his life together as a one-armed gunslinger. And uh, you know, he's 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 not he can't fan the hammer, obviously, but uh, but he's good with the gun, at least in one hand. Right. All right. Thank you very much for that. That's JP as Eldon Fallon. And then uh, I believe you were wanting to go next, Garof, so take it away. No, you picked him. I don't want to go anymore. Oh, come on. Just okay, do Okay, I'll do it. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm Garof Galati, and I'm playing uh, Wheeler McLintic, uh, Doc McLintic, as he's known. Um, Doc McLintic was always sort of like the butt of jokes and insults when he was uh, in school back east. Um, he had a bunch of bizarre ideas, and uh, his... Uh, other scientists didn't really take to them. So he moved out west uh, to show those stuffed shirts what a real scientist can do. Um, Empire Rail has an R&D department and they uh, are sort of like the perfect place to tinker because he can always go out on assignments and that gives him plenty of opportunities to field test his wacky ideas. Um, he doesn't, he still doesn't like being made fun of. So he has, you know, very thin skin. Um, but uh, he, he makes do. Uh, he, he, he wants to show those people back, uh, back east that uh, he, he can be better than them, uh, even with his crazy ideas that he has. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for Wheeler. All right. And he's a mad scientist, if I didn't say it already. I, I think I think even if you didn't say that, it was becoming abundantly clear uh, <laughs> what, what you were. Yes, a mad mm -hmm. scientist mm -hmm. is Wheeler McClintic. All right, thank you very much for that, Gaurav. Uh, who's next? I'll go, since all right. Megan's making a face. <laughs> yeah, Megan's face. I don't know why you all are so scared to introduce yourselves tonight. Uh, hi, my name's Dom Zook, and I'm playing Ransom Keen, uh, a huckster who uh, ha has gotten by on his wits and uh, a little bit of uh, help from a Manitou um, that he deals with every so often. And uh, uh, he knows his way around um, some of the, uh, let's say, uh, back backwater towns, as it were. Uh, and he's best friends with uh, Eldon. And um, hey, happy to be here. All right. Well, thanks very much. We're <laughs> happy to have you here, uh, Dom Zook, as Ransom. And that is uh, that is one thing that, that we should point out there as well. Um, I don't know if you mentioned it, Gaurav, but uh, Wheeler has a thing for Cherry uh, as well. Uh, yes, I, I didn't know if I wanted to or to give that away, but well, yes, sorry, he does. Sorry that I gave it up from the <laughs> get-go. Uh, why don't we meet the object of your affection? Last but not least, we've got. Hi, my name is Megan Caves and I am playing Cherry, 
She is a chi master um, and she was a street urchin. She's a, she's an orphan, your traditional orphan. <laughs> um, but she was a street urchin who um, had a pretty rough life as a child. She was beat up a lot, has the scars to prove it. Um, and a wandering uh, Chinese beggar took her under his wing. Uh, I don't know if you have a name, but I have a name. Do I name him? Um, my name was Miyagi. So your name's probably gonna be way better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> his name was Renda. Um, and, and she, she traveled with him and he taught her the ways of mastering chi. So she is a, she is a martial artist and a chi master and she is uh, very small. And uh, I think that's about it. I don't know, did I miss anything important? I, I think that's good. The, the only other thing I would bring up is that, uh, it, were you gonna say the thing about Eldon? Yeah, Eldon saved her life once. Um, I think it was kind of one of those things where, you know, she got in, uh, over her head, there were too many people around her, and he came in shooting people, and kept her from dying. All right. Okay. So uh, a little bit of uh, of blood ties and other bonds between the four of you, but uh, you all work as troubleshooters for Empire Rail as well. We'll get a little more into that in a bit. But I have one more question. In the spirit of this Kickstarter and the new version of Deadlands, I would like to know from each of you what one cool thing or new thing or interesting thing uh, about the setting that I have revealed to you. Keep in mind, I have only given these guys their uh, characters that I made for them, and I have selected just a couple pages of the PDF to give to them uh, as, as pertinent to each of their characters. But in the things that I have seen uh, that I've given to you, or if you're Megan and you live with me because you're my wife, uh, <laughs> any one of the random things you've heard me shout out about while I was reading the PDF, which one cool thing uh, are, are you most most pleased with that you've seen so far? Well, I of of the of the little crumbs of information that we we get <laughs> from JCC, I I really like the the new like dual rules. And it's 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 a little different because it's like duels are not as separate a system as they were before. But they, but there's it's it's really cinematic, and I think I, I really hope that we get into one because uh, I mean, who knows? We we yeah. just might. They seem very cool. It I is, don't know how much we can cool. say about them, but but look forward to it. Well, we don't have to say too much about them. Uh, we might we might have an opportunity to see how they play out in the game, but um, yeah, they're they're very different, and I think a lot of fun. Who else has one? Um, um, I have one. Okay. Uh, so uh, not ever playing a chi master before, or having not played one. Um, I know that this is not entirely different, but it's a little different. There are different um, martial arts styles that you can take, and it's all encompassed in one edge, sort of like when you take- Superior Kung Fu. Yeah, and, and you can switch between them and they give you different cool things that are like, that's a bonus um, to fighting. And it's different for each different style. I just think that's really cool because it's, it gives you so much variety while also not being so much that you're like, I can't have what, I can't keep track of anything anymore. It's, it's just the way it's set up is it, it like, I don't know, whenever you have a box that's, that's not too contained, but it's not too big, that's when like creative mind really gets going for a game like this. So I really like that. And yeah, Jordan has shouted out random things. I mean, seriously. I'm going last, I'm going last. No, 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 I'm just saying, he's sitting there reading it. He's like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And he would kind of tell me a few things here and there, but I don't get much more than anybody else does, so. Just saying, just saying. There was, uh, I believe in the Flood plot point campaign, there were um, some some elements that were similar to the uh, different Kung Fu fighting styles in the Superior Kung Fu Edge. But uh, yes, it is now in the core book. It's a core part of, uh, or a core option for Chi Masters, which is really cool. It's cool, it's really cool. <laughs> Garab, you had something? I did. Um, so in the pages that you've given me, there are some mad scientist edges. Uh, one which I found particularly interesting is called or eater. Um, and as you know, mad scientists uh, deal with ghost rock a lot. And this edge uh, basically lets them uh, eat ghost rock in various ways. Uh, and that will uh, give them, uh, it, it increases their connection to the hunting grounds. And, and gives doing them so. extra power points. Yes. So they can sprinkle it on their food or add it to their whiskey. Um, and it's just something they do. And they, you know, 
who knows it, it could turn it could turn bad for them because there are some downsides as well to this um and uh yeah, ghost, rock, ghost fever. rock fever related yeah. downsides ghost uh, rock <laughs> fever is a thing so um I, I my character does not have that but if he ever did advance i guarantee he would take this one <laughs> so so can you like recognize uh mad scientists sometimes by like their blackened teeth or something like that potentially I, it depends yeah. on how much of that ore they're chowing down it's, on yeah exactly <laughs> but yeah i was uh, i was a fan of that edge too that's very cool how about you dom uh there are a few things with the huckster uh that i'm just getting settled with but i yeah. think one of one of the coolest things that that is new here i believe that's new is that the hucksters can cast anything yeah yeah, so, that is so anything from their from their spell list. Anything from their spell list. So when they deal with the devil at this point, it's not just to get power points. They can choose any spell from their spell list. And if they succeed, they can cast that as normal. And they get to keep the power points that are earned oh, uh, rather than rather than them just going away, so. Yes, yeah, so uh, they can cast any any spell from their spell list when they're dealing with the devil. Uh, it doesn't even have to be at their rank. It can be a higher rank spell than they want. It's just harder to get that spell off. And then excess power points can go towards, uh, as a bonus to your spell casting roll, or you can choose to uh, bank them in your PowerPoint pool, which is pretty crazy. Huckster's got, Huckster's got a, a pretty powerful, um, I, I will say, a buff uh in in my mind although that backfire table is still pretty nasty rosaline would wreck yeah. it would wreck now rosaline yeah. would yeah. wreck <laughs> um i'm gonna go last here and i'm going to say the coolest thing I i'm gonna cheat a little because i have had this pdf for about a week and a half and i say this pdf but just in that week and a half period um i have gone i have been given about four or five different versions of the pdf <laughs> so my favorite thing is that each time I get a new version of the PDF, uh, it's not like they cleaned up spelling and grammar. It's like they've totally reworked uh, and redone <laughs> systems and uh, arcane backgrounds and things like that. Uh, the Pinnacle team are hard at work behind the scenes, making Deadlands the absolute best version of the game that they possibly can. And I have been lucky enough to be able to see uh, some of those updates behind the scenes. So as much as I have been scrambling to keep up with what's been changing, it has been really, really cool as a fan of the setting to see all of the new things that came out. Like for instance, the first time I saw Mad Scientist, that ore eater edge was nowhere to be seen. And then oh. that just got dropped on me out of nowhere. And I was like, well, that's <laughs> awesome. Cool. Um, so I, I should also point out though, uh, we are working with a not final version of the rules. So mm -hmm. between now and the time you see the Deadlands uh, setting PDF or the physical book, there could be changes. Uh, things could be completely different in some ways, depending on how uh, things go behind the scenes and how they're working to balance and update everything. So. Take what we're doing with a grain of salt. Nothing is finalized yet, but I hope that from watching us play, you'll get at least a little bit of a taste of what's to come when you finally get the books themselves. Uh, having said that, let's hand out some bennies. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Fate chips any longer. Uh, Deadlands has been brought back in line with the rest of Savage Worlds as a whole, so bennies are what we will be handing out. Uh, some of you might lament the loss of the uh, flavor of the fate chips, as I did at first. But as you continue to read through the book, I think you will uh, you will uh, agree that this was a, a good choice. Um, so let's hand these out for everybody. Ransom, that is three bennies to start the game for you there. Thank you. Oh, there you just had them in your hand already. Wow. I know. Magic. Well, that's, I am a huckster. <laughs> uh, Wheeler, you've got the luck edge, I believe. So that means you're going to be starting right. with four bennies, passing oh. those over. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we got Cherry with three edges as well. So there you go. Three bennies. Uh, what's up? What did I say? Edges. Edges. I, got all the edges. I said edges? Yeah. Well, you got plenty of edges, but bennies are what <laughs> I'm talking about specifically. And Eldon, three bennies for you as well. Handing over there. Thank you very much. As per usual, I am going to get one Benny for each of you. And since fate chips don't matter anymore, I just thought I would go ahead and hand myself four uh, legend chips. So uh, the, the um, bennies, the oh, bennies oh. that I will be rolling with, they're just normal bennies, but you know, they're, they're legend chip uh, coat of paint. And I feel like that'll give me a little extra mojo to play with. Okay. Um, all right, folks, are you ready to uh, jump into the Weird West? 
Yeah. I think so. Let's do it. Yes. And for the first time in a long time, what do you say we saddle up? Nice. I don't have a thing. Um, here's the gun that I don't use. My cogs. So let's talk about the world of Deadlands for a moment, because uh, if you're new to the setting or if you're a veteran of the Weird West, uh, there's no information to be had here all around. Uh, the world of Deadlands is very similar to our own, but history diverges majorly at the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, during that battle, rumors say that dead from both sides rose up from, their, from the great beyond and attacked all of the members of the battle indiscriminately. Now, those are just rumors. I suppose you would have to talk to someone uh, who was there to get the full story, but that's where things started to take their turn. And then shortly after that, there was a great quake that decimated the coast of California, turning, uh, dropping most of it into the sea, but also revealing for the first time to the world at large, the mysterious fundament known as ghost rock. This new super fuel ignited a basically gold rush on steroids and the uh, hot burning and long burning uh, qualities of this fuel really rocketed scientific advancements forward, uh, giving birth to a whole new field of science known as mad science. But along with the discovery of ghost rock, uh, there have been the return of other darker forces to the world as well, some of which uh, will be uh, typified by our, our players tonight. Things things got dark. Things started to look very bleak for those who were in the know in the West. Uh, the forces of darkness were marshalling their power and preparing to do something. Uh, but only those who were very, very much in the know knew what was going on. Even so, heroes rose up. There was uh, the story of what happened to the city of Lost Angels out in California. Turns out that Reverend Grimm uh, was taken down by a second great quake triggered by a posse of heroes who washed away the evil of Reverend Grimm and the city of Los Angeles, or bits of it as well. Um, and then elsewhere on the Great Plains, uh, the, the Servitor of the Reckoners, oh, sh I, I might have said too much, but uh, you, I think you know where I'm heading with this, known as Raven, was outwitted by a second group of heroes, and a great summoning occurred over the Sioux nations, uh, which caused technology to no longer function the way that it normally does out in that region of the country. Not long after that, the killer known as Stone single-handedly gunned down the Earp brothers and their friend Doc Holliday at the OK Corral, but left alive a group of heroes that would prove to be his undoing. As uh, rumor says, Stone himself was gunned down by those heroes. However, there are other rumors saying that Stone has been spotted elsewhere in the nation since then. So take that with a grain of salt. And even Darius Hellstrom, the world's preeminent scientific mind and leader of Hellstrom Industries, famous around the world, uh, was thwarted as well in his secret machinations to open a gate to hell uh, underneath the Republic of Desiree. He has gone into isolation and hasn't been seen since then, it seemed for a time that the forces of good were not only holding their own, but might, just might, be able to triumph over the Reckoners and their dark influence. But then came the Cackler, and this fearsome huckster, secret identity, Mordred, was on a quest to reincarnate or, or essentially resurrect his mother Morgana, despite the best efforts of the agents, the Texas Rangers, and the Twilight Legion, the Cackler succeeded in resurrecting Morgana. And as he did, something known as the Morgana effect rippled all throughout history, changing things in, in subtle and in large ways and giving the bad guys a little bit of a leg up on everything. Now. Most people aren't even aware that the Morgana effect occurred and those who are aware that it happened aren't entirely sure what the plan was. But despite the Morgana effect and despite the changes that happened as a result of that, like the Civil War coming to an end much, much earlier in 1871, uh, they are waiting to see what further machinations the Cackler and his dear saintly mother might have in store for the world. But, the Reckoners, too, learned from the failure of their servants and decided to approach things with a different strategy, which 
leads us to tonight's game. The four of you are on a well-appointed small steam engine, a, a private engine given to you by Empire Rail for this job that you have all been assigned to. And as we fly in to the interior of this well-appointed private train car, where do we find the four of you? And what are you doing? I mean, Cherry often spends time uh, on her own just reflecting. Um, she doesn't busy herself too much if she can help it. So she's probably sitting near a window um, waiting for the next moment of work that comes up. Uh, that would be what Cherry would have to do because Lord knows there isn't much to look at outside of those windows. The four of you have been dispatched to a godforsaken place on the border of Kansas and Colorado to uh, look into something, but we'll get to that in a moment. Where are the rest of you in this train car as Cherry stares out the window at the, the unending plains of Kansas? So uh, I, I think Eldon, and I, I don't wanna force you into this, Dom, but I, I think Eldon and Ransom tend to spin these long rides playing cards with each other and they kind of make a drinking game out of it. And Eldon, has never beat Ransom in a game of cards once, but he is determined to do it at some point. <laughs> yep, that's right. exactly that's exactly where we are. So uh, <laughs> the two of you are sitting at another table by the window playing a game of cards. Uh, Ransom, might I ask, are you playing uh, completely straightforward with your good buddy Elton, or are you uh, doing a little bit of double dealing? <laughs> I never play straightforward with anybody, especially not L. Fair point, fair point. <laughs> uh, that might go a long way towards explaining why Elden has yet to win a game of cards against you. Uh, I think at this point, Elden knows he's cheating, but it's become like a personal thing where it's like, I have to figure out how. Like, yeah. if, if I can't catch him cheating. So this is all for your edu edu education, L. All for your education. It's Ransom. less about the fact that he is cheating and more about how. Did I interrupt you? Right. I'm sorry. No, I no, no, no. I, I, yeah. sorry. I thought we were going on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we will go on. But Elden, <laughs> uh, this, this particular assignment is weighing heavily on you, uh, especially uh, given how serious you, seriously you take your position at Empire Rail and the trust that Joshua Chamberlain has put in you. Uh, turns out, you're heading towards a place called Flat Edge, Kansas. Some little piece of land in the middle of the wide open plains of desolate nowhere that for some reason became a little bit of an upstart cattle ranching town. And Chamberlain worked hard and worked fast to secure the rights to build an empire rail spur out here to take advantage of some of that cattle trade and muscle in on Lone Star Rail's monopoly over the cattle industry. But, about six months ago, the crew that, uh, the skeletal crew that were manning the office of Empire Rail out in Flat Edge and overseeing the finishing touches of the construction of the rail spur uh, stopped communicating by a telegram with the home office back east. And about two months ago, an investigator sent out to see what the issue was also never reported back. So after not hearing from their, uh, their office crew and not hearing from the investigator dispatched to look into the office crew, Chamberlain has tasked the four of you with going out there and getting to the bottom of what exactly is going on in Flat Edge that is keeping this empire, this very lucrative potentially, empire rail cattle contract from seeing its way to completion. So while you two play your games, Eldon, Ransom, you both have this uh, this weighing on your minds to various different degrees, depending on how seriously you take your position with Empire Rail. But due to your loyal hindrance, Eldon, I know that you at least take it fairly seriously. And then, uh, Doc Wheeler, where are you in this train car while the rest are going about their business? I think uh, Doc Wheeler is um, sitting across from Cherry, like not in the same uh, bench, but across from her reading a book uh, titled uh, The Unknown Effects of Ghost Rock, uh, written by, it's, it's, a, it's a Smith and Robards book that's been 
uh, massively produced that people have read. And he just kind of, every now and then he just looks up and kind of scoffs and makes a comment like, can you believe this? <laughs> Some of them are eating ghost rock now, putting it in their whiskeys and uh, brushing their teeth with it. Now, Cherry, would you ever, would you ever think about brushing your teeth with ghost rock? I mean, that's ridiculous, right? You would never, you would don't think that's, I don't know. I mean, maybe you could brush your teeth with ghost rock. It, uh, if the effects are good enough, I mean, I would say maybe it's even a good thing that you could brush your teeth with ghost Healer, rock. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, of course not. No, I was completely being uh, a fool. I'm just kidding, of course. Uh, uh, Sounds dangerous territory to me. Right. Right. Uh, boy, this uh, sure is uh, quiet on this train, isn't it? As soon as Wheeler says that, the brakes of the train slam on and you oh. hear the, the screeching squeal of them as you come to a lurching uh, stop uh, after, after uh, beginning to slow. God damn it, Ransom. That was the hand I was gonna beat you on. Uh, I, I didn't, mm -hmm. that wasn't, I didn't do that. That wasn't my, I didn't, that wasn't me. Wheeler, no one there. thought you did, but it looks like something might be going on, so maybe we should. Head out. The engineer comes back from, uh, opens the sliding door that leads uh, towards the front of the train. Uh, sorry, sorry, you four. Uh, looks like there's a blockage on the tracks up ahead, he says, giving you all a knowing look because Empire Rail, even though Joshua Chamberlain is a very honorable man who wants to do business in an honorable way, is only one of the great rail lines that crisscross the nation and the other rail lines have been no stranger to sabotage, attacks, and outright acts of vandalism and destruction against their rival lines. So anytime there is blockage on a rail, it's always potentially some sort of greater trap. All right, well, let's get maintenance going. We'll be uh, ready. Well, uh, since you know this is a, 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 a private private carriage here, uh, we ain't got the, the normal crew. So I, I was hoping that maybe the, the four of you could just take a look around and make sure we ain't got anything else to worry about. In the meantime, I, I, I'll get the engineering boys to uh, gear up just in case we gotta shoot ourselves some Lone Stars. Of course, yeah. that's what we're here for, right? Yes, I mean, very good. Make yeah. sure that you all stay safe, because those Lone Stars, they like to go after the engineers, you know, take out the train that way. Well, they, oh, I wasn't aware of the fact that they specifically targeted engineers, but yeah, me, uh, me and the boys will, will be holed up in the uh, in the locomotive. We, we got our rifles. You just give us the high sign when, when, they're, when it, everything's clear, but if we hear shooting, we'll just start shooting. Eldon, I think next time you should probably avoid scaring uh, the engineers if you can help it. Well, if they want to work on Empire, they're going to have to know how things go sooner or later. No, Eldon's right. And I, I always say we could just get away with engineers altogether. These trains can run themselves. You put a little ghost rock in the right place, and I guarantee you won't need engineers on these trains anymore. Well, it does explode quite often, doesn't it? Well, that's a risk you take with ghost rock, but I think it's one that's worth taking. You know, right, Doc, so, I'm glad you're on our side. Well, you're lucky I am. And as you all are having that conversation, uh, the engineer just sort of backs nervously out of the room and starts calling out to the other folks uh, up ahead to get geared up and get their guns ready. The troubleshooters are going to go out and take care of this blockage. All right, let's see what herd of cows has blocked this train. All right, so you guys disembarking to take a look around? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. OK. You all walk out into the uh, the bright afternoon sun of the Kansas Plains and take a look down the track to see what it was that stood in your way. And while I wait for the sound of the bright Texas, uh, the bright Kansas Plains to pop in, uh, we'll <laughs> just give you a no. Uh, looking up the line a ways, you see uh, not a pile of debris or rocks or anything like that, but instead what appears to be a solitary steer uh, mooing and lowing in a very pitiful and plaintive way, uh, sitting on the track and uh, seeming in no hurry to move. Oh, not a hurry, just a single one. Well, this ought to be quite easy for us. All right, don't, 
Don't jump into anything without thinking about it, okay? Single yeah, we'll a, a single cow could be a coincidence, but these things normally stay in herds. It's a little strange I, for it to be out on the rails on its own. I agree with Eldon. I think that this might be, I think that it's just one is actually a bit stranger. and We need to be more on guard. Yeah. Right. Uh, you two check it out. I'll uh, maintain back here and keep the engineers sure. safe. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I'll keep the engineers safe. Yeah, keep your hand on your gun, Ransom. I give him a what? nod because uh, what gun? <laughs> <laughs> we we both know that Ransom doesn't carry a gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you you know I always come prepared, L. Well, you've never let me down so far, Eldon. He doesn't have a gun. Gary, I've yeah. worked with him long enough to know that. All right, I just thought you were a bit confused. It's, it's sorry. Uh, That's all right. It's all right. OK, okay. Uh, so Ransom is staying on the train. And then who is going out to, to investigate or look closer? I am. And I, I am. Figured, yeah, I'll go too. OK, so the three of you are heading out. Uh, as they do, Ransom, uh, yeah. if you are at all worried about uh, the possibility of an ambush or anything like that. Are you keeping an eye out despite the fact that you're staying back on the train? Yes. Okay. All right. So go ahead and give me a notice roll if you can. Be happy to. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, that's a four. Okay. A four is a success. Uh, wow, it's so, so nice you... to not have any negatives to notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, not yet, at least, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, as. Okay. As you wait for your companions to uh, gather their their belongings and disembark the train to go take a look at what's blocking it up ahead, you just move to the opposite window and kind of scan the horizon, taking a look to see if there's anything that strikes you at all unusual. And nothing does. It just seems like desolate, scrubby plain as far as the eye can see. It's actually a, a, a little bit agoraphobic in a way. It makes you feel exposed. Yeah, hurry, hurry it up out there. Yes, yes, we're doing it. So the rest of you are getting out of the train and walking up towards the, the steer on the track? Yes. Yep. Yes. As you get closer, you can tell that uh, something is not entirely uh, right with this steer. It's sitting down in a way that looks entirely unnatural. As you get even closer to it, you can see that it appears to have lodged one of its legs in between the, the railroad tracks and has broken it something fierce. You can see bits of bone and blood sticking out from the leg of this steer as it moans and moves pite piteously from where it is on the track. It also has a fair amount of blood on its flank. Uh, at this point, your, your back may be, uh, I don't know how close you would want to get uh, before uh, making sure everything was safe to continue, but I'd I think, say you're probably about 50 feet away. I, I, I would say as soon as we see that it's like stuck there and there's something going on, I would turn to Cherry and say like, Cherry, just make sure you're watching our left flank. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the right. Let's get I will, closer to this thing. We should put that poor thing out of its misery. We should get it off the track first though. Oh, so, uh, you can't put it out of its misery because that's still blocking the way. We need to remove it from the tracks, and then you can put it out of its misery if you so choose. But no, first I'll we must put remove it, it out of its misery first because uh, an animal life is just as important as ours, and I don't want to see it suffering. And we can move it right after that. Doesn't change a thing. All right. Well, I suppose we can do it your way, Cherry. All right. Very well. Uh, would you like to do the honors? Well, of course, I will take that upon myself. Now, wait a minute. I, I appreciate that we're going to worry about this cow's well-being, but before we even get up to it, we just need to make sure that we are paying attention and making sure this isn't a trap. Well, of course. It most so, likely and most certainly is a trap by my standards. Let's go know. slow. Let's watch what's going on and let's make our way up to that poor animal. Stay in the back, Wheeler. Uh, of course. Uh, thank you for your protection, Cherry. I appreciate it. Your life is important. Oh. Uh, All right. Uh, Wheeler, I'm going to give you a, a Benny for your reaction to uh, that that very normal thing to say. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> I'll take it. Also, I'm going to ask, are you wearing your ridiculous headgear, Wheeler? Um, I feel like as soon as he got on the train, he would have put it on, yeah. Okay, uh, so Wheeler is, is wearing a rig, I uh, think very much like Doc Brown from Back to the Future, some sort of like strange mechanical headpiece with a single blinking light on the top of it and little gears and whirring bits that are constantly making noise and dinging as he looks around. Eldon calls it his shoot me hat. What do you call it, Wheeler? <laughs> Uh, I call it, uh, let's see, Doc Wheeler's head. Doc McClintock's Revitalizing Chapeau of Quasi-Immortality? Oh, yes, you already gave it a name. Yes, that thing. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> All right, so as he's moving forward in his shoot-me hat, as Eldon refers to it, uh, Eldon and Cherry, can I get a notice roll from both of you, please? Yeah. Yes, indeed. And uh, Wheeler, are you also looking out for an ambush? Uh, yeah, I would be. Go ahead and roll notice, too. As well as I can. I got a five. I got a five nine. Five from Cherry. A nine, which is success with a raise from Eldon. Uh, I got a four. A four, which four is success. a success. So, um, Cherry and Wheeler, you two, uh, you're both keeping an eye out, looking behind you, looking off to the left, to the right, and forward, scanning the horizon, but much like Ransom sees back on the train, there's not much to see out here except for the endless rolling Kansas scrubby plains. Uh, all you can hear is uh, distant bird cries and the wind blowing through the desolate surroundings. Uh, there's not much else to see and you don't see many good places for an ambush either. No large outcroppings of rock or thick copes of nearby trees. None of the ordinary uh, telltale signs of a uh, ambush spot. Can I El ask if we see signs of like a herd of cattle having come through the area? Well, Eldon, you got a success with a raise on your notice roll. So uh, not only do you see what Cherry and Wheeler see, but you also do see uh, the unmistakable signs of a herd of cattle passing through this way. But you notice something else too. The steer seems very weak, like it's on its last legs, so to speak. Uh, and you see, as you get closer, flies buzzing around its face and landing on its eyes, and the animal doesn't even really do much to dislodge them. But the flies are all over its hindquarters, where you see the dried, matted blood on its body. And it looks like, underneath the moving carpet of insects, it looks like to you that it's a bite wound of some kind on this steer. Damn. Seems like something's been eating this thing before it's even died. That's, that's awful. Barbarians eat a cow before it's been cooked. Ugh. All right, well, it looks like a herd came through here. This one probably just got its legs stuck in the uh, tracks and the rest of them moved on, not knowing what to do. The steer so starts to get skittish as you all get closer. And even though it's almost entirely out of energy, it, it very, very weakly tries to pick itself up and back away from you, but collapses again to the ground under the, the, the pain and just brokenness of its leg and continues to, to just moo in pain. Can I go up to it and um, just kind of put a hand on it and say, it's all right, it's all right. You're not gonna have to be in pain much longer. And I want to uh, light up, <laughs> I want to use my fist of iron. You want to summon your fist of iron? Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to go over to it and, and kind of continue to like pet it and, and, and talk to it and say, You're, it's your time to rest now. No more suffering for you. And I want to just punch it as hard as I can in the face. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, You're going to so punch the cow out of its misery. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's all. I, I, just, I am a weapon. Uh, I would I would love for Wheeler to be talking to seeing this and seeing like well she sure has a just a gentle nice touch <laughs> doesn't she? <laughs> she's like she's being real gentle then if she <laughs> Cherry, give me a persuasion roll as you approach this animal. Uh -oh. Okay, Ducky. Uh, right, let me pull that. Get to the right page here. All right. Ooh, I aced it, which is good. Oh, nice. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, um, that is a nine. A success with a race. The creature starts 
to uh, get very skittish as you approach, but you speak to it soothingly. And somehow your respect for the balance of the flow of nature and the essential life force of all living things, even though it can't understand your words, it understands your tone. And the animal begins to calm itself as you move closer. You can smell rot and blood and sepsis on it, Cherry. And you know that what you're about to do is a kindness. So you are going to summon your fist of iron. Can you give me a focus roll, please? Yes, I can indeed. Focus. Sweet, gentle touch. Uh, <laughs> how I long for Cherry's gentle touch. I, I, I will point out that I, I know that this decision is already made, but uh, Eldon's not going to be much help when it comes to moving a car, ca uh, uh, a cow carcass. Fair point. Eight. <laughs> What? Eight. Eight, success with a raise. Uh, so fist of iron, otherwise known as the smite power, uh, you, you focus your chi into your fist and for just a moment, the sum total of your life force is concentrated right in your fist. And with one surgical blow, you reach back and then hammer your fist down onto the face oh. of the steer. And immediately there is a wet, squelching, crunching sound as Cherry puts a quick and merciful, albeit brutal, end to this creature's life. Sweet. Cherry, I will give you a Benny for uh, <laughs> at least trying to soothe it before you did that. Thank oh. you. Very Chi Master of you. <laughs> yes, that was very uh, efficient, uh, Cherry. Well, well done. Well, it's important when you're dealing with lives such as this one. Oh. You did well, but uh, we gotta get this thing off the track now. Yes, indeed. You know, we might, well, I don't know if the meat is good here, but uh, yeah, to the waste. Hey, looking at that wound on its back, I don't think we want to eat anything that's been on this animal. Well, now actually, as you speak about the wound on its back, uh, now that Cherry has put an end to the thing's life, the sudden burst of activity made the cloud of flies raise up off of the steer and reveal the ragged chunks of flesh that are missing from it. This is a very, very severe animal bite. Um, I believe you have academics. Is that correct, Wheeler? I do. Wait, no, oh, I and, have academics. And you do as well, Eldon. Yeah, uh, I also do, yes. Does anyone have survival? Uh, uh, no. Okay, then, uh, then you Wheeler, Wheeler and Eldon, will you give me an academics roll, please? Can yeah. do. Oh, I aced it. Uh, I got an eight. Success of the race. Success of the race for Wheeler. Uh, success for uh, for Eldon. All right. So Eldon, you take a look at it, and the wound appears uh, large and long in some way that's that's very strange to you, and and you can't really place what could have done this. Maybe multiple bites, and it got dragged across the flesh of the animal. That could possibly explain it, but Wheeler. Uh, you studied back east, and uh, you studied at a university, and one of the things that you had access to was uh, a taxidermied area of uh, that a naturalist professor had been collecting various different stuffed animals from all around the world, rare and unusual ones. This bite almost, uh, almost exactly matches the pattern of teeth that you saw in a creature, uh, a stuffed alligator back at university. But alligators, famously aquatic animals, you have no idea why some steer in the middle of nowhere in Kansas would be showing what appeared to be an alligator bite. Quite. Damn, what, what kind of critter you think can make something like this? Interesting. Well, uh, tell me this, Eldon. You're a well-traveled man. How far do you think the nearest uh, swamp would be to this location? Hell, I don't know. I barely know where we are on the, the track. I mean, I was just trying to play a game of cards when we stopped here. All right, all right. My mistake. Well, it, it, it looks and seems that this steer was bitten by some sort of uh, uh, gator, an alligator of some sort. Uh, at least that's what these teeth are, look like. And an alligator. Strange. Well, that's what the teeth tell me. You know, uh, well, that's data. I can't. Uh, you better uh, check that uh, headgear of yours, because I think it's doing something strange to your mind. Was it? Did you see? Did it light up? Did you see anything happen? Is there a? It's a piece missing. 
you should check that if there's something wrong with your headgear. You don't want that. Well, look, as long as there's not an alligator around here now that's going to slow down this train any further, I say we get this thing off the tracks and get back. Yes. Okay. Yes. The, the four of you share your, your usual banter and uh, working together, uh, mostly with, with uh, Eldon doing supervisory work and Cherry doing the bulk of the lifting while uh, Wheeler does his best to make himself useful. Okay. You're able to slowly, slowly push and shove the carcass of the steer off the rail line, but in your heads the whole way, you're a bit ill at ease. Wheeler saying that it looks like an alligator bite and the clear lack of any body of water or swamp anywhere near you puts you in mind of some of the rumors that go around uh, about these, these open abandoned places out west. Now, most people have heard tale of uh, the rattlers of the salt flats of Desiree or the great dragons of the maze and even most people out here in the West and uh, some troubleshooters that work for various different rail lines know better than to walk into the tall prairie grass for fear of uh, the ticks that jump directly into your mouth and down your throat. But those are the things that most folks know about. There are other things too, things that only come up around a campfire at night in the darkness when the unbelievable is a little bit more believable. There are other stories that you've heard whispers of, and as you're pushing the steer off the rail, you all feel very vulnerable and exposed out here on the open plains in the middle of nowhere, but eventually you finish up your grisly work. Meanwhile, back on the train, the engineer keeps popping his head back into the car. Um, Mr. Keene, sir? Uh, we ain't looked out there yet. We just got our guns kind of trained up towards the windows, but are, are, are your, your associates almost done? I ain't heard gunfire yet. Looks out the window. Uh, looks like they are nearly done. All right, well, we're going to go hole up back in the back in the locomotive, but you, you just give us a shout when, when everything's got the all clear, Mr. King. Oh, uh, I will surely let you know. All right, thank, thank you kindly. And he ducks back into the locomotive. Certainly don't have anything better to do. <clears throat> so after you folks are, uh, I, I, Ransom, I'll give you a penny. For yeah, that's a cool one. <laughs> <laughs> you smarmy bastard. Uh, after you folks are done moving the steer, anything else you want to do before you head back to the train? I mean, I think Cherry would at least take a cursory, a good glance about just to make sure there's nothing else to be aware of because this particular thing strikes her as specific more than just a random cow wandering onto the track and dying. It does seem that way, Cherry, but despite uh, your guardedness and your suspicions, there is nothing that meets your eye other than more open, unending plain. Okay. Um, can Doc take a sample of this uh, steer, like near the wound area? Uh, I mean, yeah, as a uh, mad scientist uh, out on a field assignment, no less, uh, you definitely have various different little field implements uh, on your person. So I imagine if you wanted to take a sample of tissue, blood? Uh, a little bit of both, yeah. A little bit of both. All right. So uh, you, you just kind of pull out a, a little uh, scalpel type implement and scoop and cut some of the dried blood and flesh from this animal into a, uh, a small glass vial that you carry with you and stopper it and put it amongst your belongings. Right, oh, right. I am done then. Let's uh, get this train moving, what do we say? All right, so you head back to the train. You let the engineers know that there's uh, nothing to be worried about and you resume travel towards flat edge yes oh, yep. steam ahead let's do it all clear engineers ransom deal them right <laughs> going back to the game huh ready to lose some more eldon yeah eldon eldon pops a, a flask out of his pocket and uh grabs like a little uh cup that is like one of those little tin collapsible cups pulls that out too and like using one hand he just like flips the thing off of it and like He's got a whole system where he can like kind of pour his own thing with uh, his own cup with just one hand, flips it back in and just sits down to 
start drinking and dealing cards with Ransom. Just just before Eldon came back in, uh, I took a look at what his cards were. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. So so Ransom, uh, as per usual, has the upper hand and probably a better hand as well. But Eldon, I will go ahead and give you a Benny for having a way to pour yourself your own uh, a drink from your flask oh, as a one-armed man. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. You continue on down the rail line uh, with no further interruptions until you finally pull into your destination. A unfinished spur and an unfinished railhead here in Flat Edge. Uh, and you look out the windows at the town that greets you. As you step off the train, a few things strike you. Uh, this little settlement, this scrubby settlement out here in the middle of nowhere in Kansas, uh, looks like it's having a bit of an identity crisis. There are some buildings that have been erected up and down what looks like a uh, general main street type area. All of the construction looks relatively fresh, but there's also a scattering of tents and other types of dwellings all around here. Now, Flat Edge is known as a ranching town, but uh, it looks like there is a little bit of growth happening here, but a little bit of a resistance to growth as well, made evident by a building at the far end of the street that is unfinished. And from the looks of it, it looks like the construction ended quite a while ago and has not been picked up on since then. The second thing that strikes you is the smell. Now you've heard uh, that some cow heavy areas can start to just soak up the aroma of cow patty, the, the endless layers of them that are deposited on the plane day after day, but you never experienced it firsthand. And right away, as soon as you get off the train, you are hit by the pungent reek of flat edge. Some foul odor beyond uh, your ability to, to pick through the pieces and identify the exact origins of the smells assails your senses. And I'm going to need a vigor roll from all of you as you're hit by this powerful stench. Oh, oh Kansas. That is <laughs> foul. Five for Ransom. I got a four. Four for Eldon, seven for Cherry. I got a three. A three for Wheeler. Wheeler, would you like to spend a Benny to re-roll that? Uh, Bennies are uh, a little more rare for us now, so I'm just I'm just gonna go with the three. All right, so Wheeler, uh, well, all of you really, as this smell assaults you, you feel your stomachs flip and turn, and you try oh. with mental force of will to push that down. Wheeler, you are not successful, and mm -hmm. what you ate for lunch comes violently exploding out of your mouth and onto the dust-covered streets. Look away, everyone, just look. Oh, oh. Christ, Damn. Wheeler, get yourself together. Don't look, nobody, nobody look at me. Wheeler, you are going to take a level of fatigue oh. from that violent upheaval you just had at the, oh. the train platform out, of Flat Edge. Pull out a, uh, a handkerchief and just pass it to him. Th th thank you. <laughs> Can I uh, get you anything? You want some beans or anything to fill you back up? Very funny, Ransom. Uh, some water would do me good, actually. I don't think that's usually how that works, Ransom. Once you have thrown up, oh. you usually don't want to eat. Once again, you illuminate my knowledge. Thank you, Cherry. You're quite welcome. I'm happy to help. What are you folks doing? Do you want to take a look around and see uh, what immediately presents itself? Or do you want to try and go somewhere in the town? What would you like to do? So um, just to refresh us, our, our mission in this town was... Find out what happened to the Empire Rail uh, office that was supposed to be set up here. Uh -huh. And also see if you can determine uh, what waylaid the investigator who was sent to find out why that office had gone silent. Okay. Well, All right. One reason makes itself immediately clear to you all as soon as you step off and uh, start looking around. The telegraph line that had been installed at great personal expense to by uh, Empire Rail is down, uh, just lying on the ground uh, nearby. The, the, the poles seem to have just been 
cracked and toppled, and the wires are in a, a, a useless pile. Uh, are there people around? There are a fair few people around. Will everyone give me a notice roll? I got a two. Seven, Seven two, five. five. Eldon? I got a 13. A 13, a success with two races. So uh, Wheeler, you were still feeling uh, quite quite faint and lightheaded after vomiting uh, everywhere. Um, Ransom and Cherry, looking around, you see that uh, there's a fair amount of activity here. Although the, the people around here look like typical cattle folk. You don't see a lot of uh, family men and women or children running around. This is a pretty pretty rough and tumble crowd of cowpokes and ranch hands and other uh, people that might be drawn to an area like this. Eldon, you see all that as well. You also detect a distinct feeling of almost open hostility from the, the people that pay any attention to the four of you here on the platform. Uh, most of the folks just seem to be ignoring you entirely, but those who do shoot furtive glances your way, you see anger or something else dark cloud their countenance. Well, I can tell you all this. We're not welcome here. Whatever stopped the previous Empire office from getting set up, doesn't seem like it's gonna want us to doesn't like us here anymore. Why would a town such as this one that's out so far not want a rail line here and not want a, a railhead? I mean, wouldn't that only be beneficial for them? Yeah, well, there's a lot of politics that are wrapped up in these rail lines. Who knows? Maybe somebody who uh, doesn't exactly have Empire's best uh, results Interest? in mind is in charge around here. Huh. Well, well uh, I would say we should get right to work, right? Yeah. Be careful. Uh, I think your problem might be that downed uh, telegraph line there, El. Yeah, well, it's certainly a start. But uh, just everybody walk around. Make sure you've got eyes on both sides of your head. Because uh, for sure these people don't want us here. I only have the... I can't even say this with a straight face. <laughs> I only have the one set of eyes. All right, well, mm -hmm. just... You know, uh, keep a look out. I could be your other set, Sherry. We could travel together and see what we could find. I, I think it works better that way. What that's, do you think? Quite uh, smart. Quite smart. I actually think, uh, and he kind of leans over to Cherry. He's like, maybe do keep an eye on the dock. You know how he gets a little fragile in these situations. Of course. Yes, it I will do. Ugh. So what do you folks want to do? Do you want to try and talk to the townsfolk? Do you want to try and see if you can locate the Empire Rail office? Or do you want to do something else entirely? I mean, I yeah, I think at least Cherry would go straight for the whatever the first thing would be, which would be trying to locate the rail line office or anyone associated with the rail line in town. Yeah. Yeah. Do we My know thought who... was that we'd probably go check out wherever it was supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. What were you going to say, Ransom? Uh, do we know who uh, who our contact is here? Uh, who was supposed to be the head person at that office, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, those of you, I guess you're all troubleshooters with the line. Give me a common knowledge roll to see if you know anything about uh, who was stationed out here. I got a four. Five. Four? Five? I got a three. A three. Wheeler, you are not doing well. Common knowledge. Who needs it? Two for Cherry. Okay. Um, so Cherry and Wheeler, uh, you have other things that occupy your attention uh, in your duties for Empire Rail. You leave the administrative stuff to the others. Uh, Ransom, you try and make it your business to know as many things as you feel it is pertinent for you to know. And Eldon, uh, you're just a responsible uh, company man. So you know as much as uh, is helpful to your performance of your duties. Both of you know a man by the name of George Goss was supposed to be the head of the, uh, the Empire office here. But uh, you got a five and a four, was that correct? Yeah, I got a five. Neither of you know Goss personally. 
Uh, you just okay. you just know that name, but neither of you have had any uh, interaction with the man. Well, All right, let's go try and find wherever that uh, where the office was, and uh, then keep an eye or keep an ear out for mention of a uh, Goss. Maybe we can check out the local saloon, see if anybody's heard of him there. Will do. That sounds like a plan. Let's head out. Affirmative. Okay. Okay. I mean, ordinary standard practice for Empire Rail is to build the office as near the platform for the train as makes sense. But as you cast your eyes around, you don't see any building uh, near the platform, uh, just the buildings that have been constructed along the main street interspersed with uh, little tent communities. It seems like they didn't, they didn't even get started building this uh, this headquarter, right? Yes, yes, not much progress has been made. I wonder what stopped them. So question, how much, like, do we know how much, like how many resources Empire already sent here? Like, was it supposed to have already been in construction and they just never heard word back or? At this point, the rail line, this spur was supposed to be fully operational and transporting cattle. So everything is way behind schedule. Um, Empire sent out a uh, advanced team to get uh, started constructing an office and oversee the completion of uh, the rail work. But looking around at the platform around you, uh, it seems unfinished. Uh, the the rail lines have just even barely been laid, and uh, you don't see an office near the platform, as is the standard for Empire. Um, Cherry, a moment, please. Uh, will you come inspect this uh, downed uh, telegraph line for, with me? Um, yes, of, of course. So uh, I want to go over and look and see if I can figure out how it was downed. If it was done by people or something else. Okay. Um, give me a notice roll, Wheeler. Okie dokie. And Cherry, as he's doing that, you're kind of keeping an eye out. You see uh, what looks like uh, a young, hard-looking woman coming out of a general store nearby. And she kind of squints over at you and Wheeler by the telegraph line. And you see her eyes kind of widen a little bit. And she seems to skulk around the uh, front of the general store, pretending to inspect her packages and whatnot, but you get the impression she's keeping an eye on you. Wheeler, I believe um, this this lady over here is watching us. I'm just gonna give her a wave. Uh, if she saw your wave, she makes no indication that she did. Hmm, this appears so. Did you make your notice roll, uh, Wheeler, for... I, I did. I got an eight minus one, so seven. Seven. Okay. Um, that is one shy of a success with a raise. It Peter. looks like the wood at the bottom of these telegraph poles has been splintered and torn in some way. It's hard to tell by what. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a mess, and it's been a while since it happened, so... Insects and uh, the weather have eaten away at, at the wood, making it somewhat less clear what the uh, impetus was for the, the rail or the telegraph lines coming down. Okay, with that result, can I tell how long ago maybe? Or is that too much? That was just a success, not with a okay. raise. So okay. that's, that's all great. you're able to glean. Gotcha. Well, I can't make heads or tails to see if this was downed by people or some of, sort of machinery. I don't know, but... Um... Maybe we could just ask around, you know, something falls down in town, someone's bound to know. Uh, Maybe we could, uh... lady over there knows. Yes. She, as you gesture towards her, you catch her once again looking off in your direction, but she stops and inspects the, the sun in the sky and looks around as though she's waiting for someone, but it doesn't oh. seem entirely... Uh, Ma'am, you shouldn't fun. stare at the sun like that. It's bad for your eyes. She looks over... I'm sorry, were you addressing me? Oh, yes. It looked like you were staring directly at the sun, and I don't recommend that. Well, thank you very much for your unasked for advice, but uh, You're welcome. I'll take care of me and my, my own. Thank you very much. Well, it seems like before you were staring at the sun, you were staring at uh, this downed uh, telegraph post. Now, could you tell us how this happened? Storm blew him down. 
uh, a storm a storm blew him down. Now, how long ago was that storm? Can't recall. Uh, I, I, I feel like you uh, are uh, something wrong here. Is, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, who are you? And uh, why should I be answering your questions? Well, I'm, I'm Doc McClintic. Nice to meet you. I'm uh, from Empire Rail, and this here is Cherry. We're she, her, face, her face goes hard, uh, as you say, Empire Rail. Yes, yes, I, I suspected as much. Oh, uh, okay. I'm. If you'll, if you'll excuse me, I, I've business to attend to. We're all very busy here. What? And she turns to go. What exactly is it that you're busy with? Give me a persuasion roll, Cherry. Okay. <laughs> remember, you're at a minus one because of your hideous scars. <laughs> I remember. I used to know. Um, that is a five. Uh, wow. Okay. So nice. she she stops with a a little bit of a of a sigh and says, "Well, you know, I I don't know what it's like for you folks living calm and." plush lives back east under the employ of the mighty Empire Rail, but out here we have to fight tooth and nail for what we get to survive. So that's what's occupying my time, miss. That's what's got us all so busy. What sort of lush life do you think we live? <laughs> she looks back at you and looks at the scars covering your face and all visible flesh on your body and says, well, Maybe not across the board, everybody, but you take my meaning. I don't entirely. It actually kind of sounds like you have some frustration with uh, this particular rail company. And, well, we're here to help. That's what we're here for. We're here to find what what happened. So um, if you have some information for us, we'd, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, if anything comes to mind, you'll be the first to know. Was that a... Uh, she's going to turn to Wheeler and say, all right, something about that didn't seem right, but we'll take your word for it. Yeah, it seemed completely false. Um, That's it. That's what it was. I really must get back. Yes, uh, do so. Uh, we will speak to someone a little more helpful. Thank you for your time. She doesn't respond to that at all, just turns curtly on her heels and stalks off away from you. Does she go into a building or does she just walk down the street? She, she just walks down uh, the main street and, and back away from you. All right. I think we might have to use some sort of guise because it seems that these folk aren't uh, quite uh, fans of uh, Empire Rail, it seems. Um, all right. Uh, maybe we should visit the saloon. What do you think, Cherry? Uh, I suppose that sounds uh, just fine. Well, before we do that, let me ask uh, Ransom and Eldon, were you nearby while this was happening? Or what have the two of you been doing while uh, Wheeler and Cherry were investigating the telegraph poles? So my thoughts were that as soon as we get to the town, since we need information about these people who have gone missing and stuff, Ransom and Eldon would probably head to a saloon, right? That would be my first place to go to regardless but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah um, all right yeah well let's give this little hole in the wall a, you know proper getting to know you drink <clears throat> yeah it might be time to uh to uh you know throw some wind through them doors as it were it's yeah. my pappy used to say it's a weird saying anyway let's go <laughs> <laughs> um you always know how to talk <laughs> Here's the problem. All of these buildings look largely the same, and as far as you can tell, there's no placard of any kind outside of each one to advertise what the business is. It seems like just a small enough community that everybody just knows which building is which and doesn't need a sign to tell them otherwise. All right, well, I mean, it's a town, right? Somebody's got to be drinking here somewhere. Uh... I can't fault you for that line of thinking. You don't hear any music or anything out here? You guys want to give me a notice roll? Yeah. What was the name of the guy we were trying to find, to get, or like who? George Goss? George Goss. Goss, 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 yes. Goss the Goss. boss, baby. Two. I got a two. 
two for ransom. I got a 14. A 14. I'm noticing really well today. Elden, you, you got this. For some reason, you're uh, you're a little bit on edge, and your your senses are, are are keen in the way they are when you feel like you're on the cusp of of something uh, dangerous, and often when it comes to you, action packed. So as you look around, uh, you definitely do see at the far end of the street what looks like an establishment that the people who go in into look pretty thirsty, and the people coming out of it look mighty sauced. But also, uh, just a little ways down the street, kind of sandwiched in between what looks like a general store and maybe a hardware store, is a small, unassuming building. And you got a 14 on your notice roll mm -hmm. with a, uh, a very hard to see uh, sign above the door that looks like it's maybe been just slopped over with black paint. But the peeling old paint reveals uh, a little bit of the Empire Rail logo to you. Well, looks like we might be on the right track after all. I kind of elbow uh, Ransom and point at the mm -hmm. sign. Oh, well, isn't that a fine howdy do? Hmm. How fresh do you think that paint is? Well, I don't know, but let's go find out. Right. Okay, so investigating the uh, the Empire office and waiting on the saloon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, we'll say this is happening while uh, Wheeler and Cherry are speaking to that young lady from the town. So you two head over to the uh, Empire Rail office, leaving Cherry and Wheeler back by the, the train platform, but not out of sight from, from the two of you. And uh, the place looks shuttered up tight. The windows uh, the curtains have been drawn from the inside so there's nothing to glean from there and the door appears firmly closed there's no signs of activity i lean up against the the door frame and i just kind of motion for for eldon you want to knock or might as well i don't think there's anybody in there though i'll rap on the door all right you give the door a nice solid wrap with your one good arm, Eldon, and after a long moment, there is no response. However, you can all feel the eyes of other people in the community on your backs as you stand here at the Empire office doorway. Looking back right. around you though, everyone is suddenly very busy. All right, Ransom, maybe we should go get ourselves a drink and see what people know about this building before we break our way in. Maybe keep it on the down low that we're part of Empire. Sure, sure, I, I always I always do. Uh, but let's just recap here. Um, sorry, I, I dove into Bogue a little bit <laughs> for a minute there. <laughs> let's, Voices let's, are hard, everybody. Yeah, Voices are, are hard. They are let's hard. recap here. Um, down telegraph pole. Yeah. They have painted over the sign for the rail line uh, box. Uh, they don't want us here at all, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, am I crazy? No, no, I, I, I think you're reading the room correctly there. Okay. That's the first thing I felt when I got off that train. Right, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, let's see what this uh, saloon has in store for us. And uh, yep. if, if anyone asks, we are just uh, weary travelers looking for some sucker here in Kansas. Sure. Let's see if we can find some sucker. All right. <laughs> I, I put a hand on his shoulder and we go head over to the saloon area. Okay. Uh, as you're heading that way, uh, I believe Wheeler and Cherry were also looking for the saloon. And uh, looking back down the street, you see Ransom and Eldon heading towards a building at the far end of the street across the way from that unfinished construction project. Uh, would you follow them or would you do something else, Wheeler and Cherry? Well, if they're in there, it's not long before it'll be a little bit louder. So I don't know if this is our best course of action. Uh, Cherry, what do you think? Well, I think if we let them go in there without us, that um, they may be in there longer than they should be. But I also think that while they're in there doing their thing and learning whatever information they'll learn, 
we could continue find another information. So I really think it could go either way. Um, I mean, that is not a good place to be, but it is did, what it is. Did, did we see them go to that door and knock and then go to the bar? No, so you didn't we see that. Okay, we didn't see that. Uh, so we don't know that that empire rail building. I guess there, my right? primary question is this: Have have the two of you, uh, ha or have the four of you, split into two separate groups who are uh, trying to investigate separate things, or are you all uh, meeting back up together to head to the saloon? Uh, I mean, I don't think we talked about that. It kind of, I think we kind of just split off. I don't think this place is very just, big, so I think we just kind of wandered, and we'll, sure. I'm sure we'll come back to this train location soon. Right. Well, I, I guess yeah. since you guys see us, it's up to you guys. Do you want to, shall we reconvene? Well, yeah, I, I will say it does seem like nobody likes us here and there are power in numbers and you, no offense, Wheeler, cannot take care of yourself too well. And I don't want you to get hurt just as I don't want anyone else to get hurt. Oh, I, Jerry, I didn't know you cared so much about my well-being. I am touched, truly touched, and I uh, of course, I will obviously watch uh, your behind as well. I, I have, I mean, not your literal, I, you, you know what I mean when I say I have your back. Right, uh, every life is important. Ex except for that cow that you, you punched to death, that one less important. No, that, that cow was just as important, but its time had come. And Okay, well, as long as we can agree that there are values to life forms, there are lesser values, higher values. We could talk about this in the bar. I do fancy me a drink right now. Uh, let's go in. All right, but I don't agree with the last thing you said. But yes, let's go to the saloon. Okay, so uh, bantering back and forth, the two of you meet up with Eldon and Ransom as all four of you walk through the doors of the saloon. Uh, but before I walk in, I'm actually going to stop at the the uh, door and uh, kind of take take off my goggles and kind of take some dirt and just rough myself up a little bit. Like, oh, I have to look like I'm not one of Empire Rail, so I'm just trying to. Uh, I'll just be like a traveling tincture salesman or something. I'll make something up. I'm very good at improv. You'll see. Wheeler, I've got bad news for you. You're never going to look like you come from here. Well, I can try. By the way, uh, I don't know if you all have picked up on this, but uh, people don't seem too kindly to Empire around here, so maybe don't mention that that's who we're working for right off the bat. All right. Yes. We already did that, and uh, she was quite rude, this woman we spoke with. Well, that just uh, adds weight to my hypothesis then. Oh, uh, uh, Wheeler, you're coming in and out again. You should be careful about your mad scientist uh, gear. So just sorry. sorry about that. Sometimes it makes you phase out of existence, apparently, Wheeler. <laughs> That's very strange. <laughs> Blend into your surroundings. Um, Wheeler, so you're trying to rough yourself up and make yourself look like a, uh, a man of the road, yes? Yes, a traveling salesman of sorts. Give me a performance role. Okay, cool. Don't have that skill. Um, <laughs> no way. <laughs> is there a way I can jack of all trades this, though? Because I do have jack of all trades. Is anyone else around trying to make themselves look like men of the road? Or women, as the case may be? Cherry doesn't know how to do that. She already is that. There's right. no one to observe here, unfortunately, Wheeler. So I think you're just going to have to do your best. Uh, can, can I observe someone else going into the bar and kind of take their stature? Absolutely. Yeah. Like the way they're they're like walking and talking and moving. So you want to you want to spend a moment just to watch the flow of people coming in and out of the saloon? Yeah, a sort of a social experiment, sort of like can I manipulate my body to match their body language? I will say Wheeler, then you can use your jack of all trades edge if you want to do that. So go ahead and make that smarts roll. Okay. Success, you'll gain a D four in performance, and with a raise, you'll gain a D six. Okay, let's see. Eldon's Wait. not much of a disguise guy because he's found that people seem to remember him for some reason anyway. Yeah, you've got memorable <laughs> features, Eldon. Must be that's, that smile. Uh, that's not very good. I rolled pretty terrible, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use a Benny. I'm gonna use, use one of my Benny bennies. to re-roll. All right. Okay, the D10. This should turn out pretty well. Uh, that's another failure somehow. Uh, wow. This makes. Sense. This makes this, yeah, yeah. You know what? This makes sense. Sorry. So, uh, uh, okay, I just, I can't, we, we, I'm not that tall. Hey, Doc, uh, what what exactly are you um, I'm trying not to that do? Because you're kind of drawing attention to us right now with whatever you're doing. 
Yeah, the four of you are just standing outside the door to the saloon, and three of you are hanging back while Doc Wheeler just sort of stands there and stares at people coming in and out of the saloon, kind of shifting his body around to mimic. I have more teeth than that mimicking person, their so faces. I, can't, I can't be that. I'm well, way prettier than that man. I can't do that. Oh, this this isn't going to work. I'm just I'm just going to go in and use my use my intelligence to get me get me by. Maybe yeah. you should practice focusing a little bit more, Wheeler. Just calming, breathing, focusing. Oh, I I, I don't like silence. It, it scares me. I like my mind to continue just uh, moving. Uh, that sure is telling about you. Well, good luck with that. I'm going in. Okay. Uh, I, we're right behind you. Okay. So you push open the swinging doors, and I hate to be cliche and say that the music stops and everyone turns to stare at you as soon as you walk in, so I won't, because that is not what happens. Uh, you walk in, and everyone completely ignores you, almost suspiciously so. No one whatsoever casts a glance towards the door as the four of you walk into the saloon. Not the tender behind the bar, not any of the people sitting around the bar at the various tables uh, at, you know, differing degrees of drunkenness and uh, being in their cups, nor any of the people playing cards. In fact, it's like you didn't even walk in at all. Uh, this seems completely normal to me. This is the exact reception I get when I walk into a bar, so Did that. that's normal. Normally, device someone that you yeah. were using, Wheeler, that made you disappear. Did that extend out to us, maybe? Or oh, uh, I, I certainly hope not. Although, if it did, that's a, a scientific revelation. I have to take some notes. <laughs> Listen, small towns like this usually take notice of newcomers, so uh, I don't know exactly what's going on here, but uh, watch each other's backs, I suppose, and uh, we'll get along just fine. Red's got there, the right of it. Is All there right. a uh, is there a, a poker table or anything going on? Pharaoh, maybe? Uh, there is actually a table where it appears some people are playing cards over in the corner. Uh, one of those people is a, uh, a very uh, wealthy looking gentleman dressed in a white suit, looking very much like, let's see if I can get that to focus, like nice. this gentleman here nice. uh, <laughs> from a Doomtown card. Uh, he appears to be gregariously engaging people at the table in conversation, uh, although the pile of chips in front of him is much higher than uh, those around him, and everyone else at the table seems to be in far less good spirits than he. Oh. Well, I think I found someone that uh, might have some answers here, or if, and if he doesn't, uh, I think he has some answers for me. So uh, I will take a seat up next to him. Before uh, Ransom goes over there, I just want to put a hand on, on your shoulder and say, Ransom, cheating is not very nice. Who said I cheated? I'm just saying beforehand, uh, before you go over there. I said you cheated, Ransom, but I've never been able to prove it, so <laughs> don't let them start. Statistically, right. statistically speaking, you have been cheating, so. Well, I, for one, am astonished that all of you think that I would cheat, my dear friends. Um... Good day. <laughs> He'll go over to you. The, turn uh, and head over to the table. Yeah, what are the other yeah. three of you doing? Eldon will just go to the bar and order a, a, a just go over and kind of put a coin down on the bar and just be like, I'll just take a double of whatever you got. Uh, uh, Wheeler's going to come over and do the exact same thing, the exact same way he did it, just to blend in. <laughs> okay. And Cherry, what are you up to? Uh, I will uh, probably find a spot where I kind of have my back to the wall and just try to get a feel for everyone in the room, see if anything stands out, just kind okay. of Okay. So Cherry, you kind of head over into a corner of the room and post up and lean against the wall, just keeping a uh, very casual, lazy almost eye on the uh, the occupants of this saloon, but you're you're very carefully watching everything. The two of you walk up to the bar and place down your coins and ask for a double of whatever he's got, and then a double of whatever he's got. And the bartender turns after a long moment in mid-conversation with another saloon patron and looks at your money and looks up at the two of you. Uh, sorry, afraid we're uh, fresh out. <laughs> anyway, sorry. so uh, that's what I was saying to... Uh... You say you're fresh out of everything. 
Yeah. Yeah, just sold out of our uh, last bit of hooch. So apologies. Are, are there bottles of liquor that are like visible? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, they line uh, the back shelf behind the bar. So anyways, what I was trying to Seems say- Seems highly unlikely, Eldon. But Eldon is going to reach over the bar, grab one of the bottles of liquor, pour himself a quick drink. Ooh, um, you do that and the bartender stops and comes over to you. Now, uh, why would you go and do something like that? Well, I assume that this was someone else's since you said you were all out. He looks at the uh, drink that you've poured and grabs the bottle and also pockets the coins that both you and Wheeler have placed on the bar. Listen, I'm gonna overlook this this one time, but uh, nobody reaches behind my bar but myself. See that you remember that. If the drinks are on this side, it's not a problem. He gives you one last angry look and turns back to c the conversation that he was having. It was a simple transaction. I, we didn't get our change back. Is he going to give us our change? I don't think he is. Oh. Meanwhile, over at the poker tables, uh, as you get closer, Ransom, that uh, gregarious gentleman in the white suit is finishing up. Well now, gentlemen, it uh, seems that once again, I have come out on top of the lucky heap here. I don't know what to tell you. It just must be my day. And he gives them all a winning smile as he pulls a large stack of chips and loose bills towards himself. And they get up angrily grumbling and just slapping their hats against the table and disperse. He looks up at you. Oh, an out of towner. Been a while since someone has wandered through our humble burg. Right. Well, uh, <laughs> it's been a while since I've been uh, addressed as such. Uh, and you are? Oh, the name is uh, Claude Guildford. He extends a hand. And yourself? Uh, my name is uh, Keen, Ransom Keen. Ransom Keen. I like the name. Puts me in mind of a clever individual. You fancy yourself a clever individual, Mr. Keene. Only my parents were clever, sir. Ha, huh. just so. Well, uh, a clever individual, uh, such as uh, your parents, as you claim them to be, would notice that this is not exactly a friendly establishment for the likes of one Ransom Keen. Well, uh... I don't know. I mean, no one's been giving me too much mind here. Well, that's exactly my point. Now, you look like someone who's in need of something. Am I, am I mistaken? You know, all I really am in need for is a good game of cards and, and maybe a stiff drink. And uh, I think that's all I need to uh, see myself through the night. As you say a good game of cards, his eyes light up and his uh, eyebrows just dance up on his forehead. A game of cards? Well, I think that I could probably uh, meet you on that field of battle, good sir. It seems that everyone else in this establishment has no desire to play cards with me anymore. And you hear someone pipe up from the corner. That's because you take all our money, Claude. <laughs> uh, I can't help it that uh, Lady Luxie's fit to shine her smiling visage upon me more often than most. Well, tell you what, Mr. Keen, why don't you go ahead and pull up a seat here and, uh, well, I'll make you a little proposition. Seeing as how uh, you and your three friends that have spread out here through this fine establishment seem like you're looking for something and uh, I'm taking it from your demeanors and their sour expressions that you have come up short so far, I'll make you a, a proposition. Why don't we uh, wager a bet here? Uh, you put down $10 and I'll put down uh, some useful tidbits of information for you. How does that sound? Whoa, $10, well, 
I don't know what you think I do for a living, but ten dollars is still quite a hefty sum. Um, how about uh, how about we say five dollars and uh, the tidbits come as they will? Hmm. Ain't so much a fan at giving away free tidbits, Mr. Keen. Uh, my information must be won fair and square, just as your money must be won fair and square. All right then, let's uh, let's chalk it up to a good old-fashioned game of poker, shall we? Okay, I win. See. You you give me tidbits. You win. I'll keep giving you money. Well. Doesn't that sound like a winning proposition for me? And he gestures at the chair for you to take a seat. So, are you uh, are you going to ante up ten dollars ransom and try and I, uh, win information from this individual? Dollars. Yes. All money. Just a just a, a, a loose estimate. That's two hundred and seventy modern day dollars roundabouts. So uh, a pretty pretty stiff pot to uh, wander into. Claude just gestures at the empty middle of the of the poker table in front of you. Your your uh, a bet, good sir. Just How much money do you middle. have on you, Ransom? Two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, what? No, oh I um, that's not supposed to be the case. <laughs> oh I well, because this is why I'm like jumping in. <laughs> no, you got uh, you have fourteen dollars on you, Ransom. Oh, so, cool. Uh, okay. This is this is. Uh, 250 is how much you start with uh, before you get provision. This is ah. your... Uh, oh, which you have I have remaining. no provisions. I have no provisions. None you of that You have some. Away. What you have is $14. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the deck of cards that I have was very expensive. Very uh, expensive. I, yeah, I'm going... I'm I, I, I'm basically, I'm calling him, him out here. So I'm going to put in 10 bucks of my own money. Okay. Now, do you intend to play this game straight, Ransom? Or are you going to try and employ a little bit of skullduggery? Um, I'm going to play it, uh, I, I will, yeah, I will do some skullduggery. So skull, you're going to cheat. I'm going to cheat. All right. Yes. Okay. So you are going to be at a plus two to your gambling roll. Mm -hmm. Um, however, if you critically fail, uh, it will become immediately apparent that you're cheating, but because you're at card sharp, you have the card sharp edge. If yes. he's cheating and he fails on his gambling roll. Uh, you'll be able to tell, and even if he is cheating, he gets no bonus to his role. Of course, he doesn't know that. So, uh, poker's your game, then. Is that what I heard you say? It's the only game I know. <laughs> it's Call the me only rude. Game. <laughs> it's the only game any intelligent man cares about. Pharaoh is for people who are wanting to throw their monies away. Let me uh, deal you in. Mm. And uh, he's going to make a gambling roll. This is going to be opposed okay. by yours, all right? Okay. Uh, that's pretty terrible, but I don't want to waste one of my bennies on that. So a four is what he's rolling with ransom. Okay. Go ahead and make your gambling roll. And you did say you were cheating. So you do that at a plus two. That would be a four. A four. Uh huh. With the plus two? With the plus two. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to spend a benny. You're going to spend a Benny. Ransom is going yep. to spend a Benny and re-roll that gambling roll. There we go. Aced it on the six. Uh-oh. Aced it, it on the six. There it is. Uh, let's see. That's 16. 16. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ransom, you take a look at the, uh, the deck of cards that he's playing with, and luck must be with you because it just so happens to match the backing of one of the other uh, secreted playing cards that you stash on your person for, for just such occasions. You're pretty sure you've got an ace or two up your sleeve for a deck that looks something like this. So after dealing a few uh, hands of poker and uh, playing through some uh, surprising ties for a little bit with both of you putting down near the exact same hand, uh, such a way that uh, Claude doesn't feel fit that uh, he's won enough to take the money from you. Uh, and it doesn't seem like he's cheating? Oh, well, he didn't fail his Oh, uh, he got a four. Role. That's right. That's so right. there's no way for you to know. Got it. Okay. But he does seem mighty perplexed when you finally lay down a winning hand, just as he's reaching out a hand to take your $10. Well, bad luck there, Keen, but 
I guess, like you said, it's only your parents that were clever. Oh, one one moment here. Uh, I see. Yes, I think this will do nicely. I think that's a straight flush. He looks at your cards as you lay them down on the table. Well, huh, son of a bitch. What do you know? It seems you have uh, bested me at my own game, Mr. Keen. Oh, I was under the impression that the, the game was, well, never you mind. I, beginner's luck, let's say. Huh, beginner's luck. Sure. Well, uh, I don't suppose you would be willing to let me uh, keep your $10 as a token of good faith? Well, that depends on the information that you're going to give me. Well, yes. And I uh, remind you, I am giving you this information at uh, great personal uh, risk to myself and my person. He says, looking around furtively as, at everyone else in the saloon, uh, there isn't a lot of popularity contests to be won by giving out information to strangers, least of all strangers who work for Empire Rail. Fair, fair. Well, let's just say I am a independent contractor. So I take that to mean that uh, you're going to be keeping your $10 then. You know, let's keep playing and uh, we'll see if you can win that $10 fair and square. But first of all, I did beat you. So why don't you give me a little bit of information now and we'll see how it goes later on. He leans back in his chair and gives you an appraising glance. Uh, somehow, I don't think that continuing to play for longer would change my luck all that much. So uh, why don't we honor the terms of our original bargain and you keep your $10 and I'll tell you this. If you're wanting to get some information from these tight-lipped townsfolk, you're barking up the wrong tree. Now, myself as a, a, a minor rancher in this area of some modest success can afford to uh, dally with out-of-towners, but most folks would rather not. However, there is a, a drunken beggarly individual what spends most of his day behind this fine establishment, a uh, rail rider by the name of Slim might be willing to give you information on the things you need. As I said, you should find him either passed out or mumbling to himself behind this very saloon and wow. uh unless i'm much mistaken he says taking a look around the room and you see one table over to the side all four men sitting at that table are just staring at eldon and wheeler and cherry uh at the other places in the saloon unless i'm much mistaken now seems like as good a time of any as uh to beat a retreat Hmm. Well, you are a gentleman, sir. I appreciate the game. Well, I do what I can. And uh, Ransom gets up and saunters over to the bar and uh, n leans next to Eldon and uh, without looking at him is just like, we got eyes on us. Uh, but I have... Uh, the idea that there might be someone uh, that we can talk to outside of here? Not having much luck talking to anybody inside. These people are tight-lipped. They clearly know who we are and they don't like it. Right. Well, uh, follow me around back and uh, we're going to talk to someone named Slim. And he takes, he orders a shot. Takes a shot. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no? He oh. orders a shot, um, but the bartender <laughs> just kind of cuts his eyes to the side and gives you a sneer and then turns oh. back to his conversation. It's, uh, it's, it's self-serve. You just reach behind and grab the bottle and just serve yourself, it seems, is how things are going. But I, uh, I, I just uh, didn't have it in me to do so. The bartender, without skipping a beat or even looking over at you, just points at a shotgun mounted on the wall up behind the bar and says, self-serve my ass. <laughs> All right. 
Ah, I see. Let's it's get a out of this shit establishment. Hole. Okay. All right. And you all, uh, you all exit the saloon. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. And you head around uh, to the back. Uh, you, actually, you fill everyone in. Yeah. On the way out, if there's someone who's not paying attention to their drink, can I just grab it? Uh, give me a stealth roll, Eldon. <laughs> okay. And uh, this isn't. Uh, this is conceivably something you could do relatively easily as a one-armed person. So the uh, the hindrance is not going to apply a penalty to this. Yeah. Uh, hmm, I'm going to re-roll with one of my bennies. Oh, that bad, huh? Yeah, it was bad. Uh, and I got a four. A four. Okay. Um, so a- on your way out, you just sort of uh, stumble a little bit. And as uh, as Wheeler kind of kind of goes to, to steady you, you just snake your, your arm out and just grab a shot off a table and hide it underneath the jacket that obscures your missing arm. Oh, right. right. I forgot. You've got the habit of drink, so I suppose I should give you a uh, a Benny for risking the ire of the already surly townsfolk just to get your whistle Well, the guy wouldn't sell me alcohol. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So you guys uh, walk out into the street of Flat Edge. Uh... So, so we uh, found the uh, Empire office. It's right nearby. Yeah. Oh. You want to find this vagrant of yours, or maybe just kick the door in and see what's going on in there? Let's keep things low right now. Uh, I get the feeling that this town doesn't want us here, and I think uh, we should probably beat a hasty retreat as quickly as possible. So let's get the information we need and get out of here. Well, unfortunately for this town, Ransom, they don't get a say on whether we have to be here or not. We're here on official business, so we're going to find out what happened to those to the other employees and, well, get things done, whether they want us to or not. I thought you were going to say that, El. <laughs> Sorry, man. Wish I could, uh, wish we could just run off and uh, take it easy, but, you know, that's not how it goes. Well, someday you could do that, but then you wouldn't have this job. When you're right, you're right, Cherry. Got me again. Uh, uh, what what did your uh, gambling friend say about this vagrant? He has some sort of information for us. Slim, uh, yeah. C- Cloud said that this uh, Slim character would probably have some uh, knowledge about why Empire has closed up shop here. So figured good a place to start as any if someone's willing to talk to us. Now, the thing is that Claude seem to think that just talking to us would uh, put a price on someone's head. Uh, which, you know, we may not want to uh, engender more hostility than, than we have to, but... Uh, Is there no sort of official law in this town? or I haven't seen it. That's a good point, Wheeler. Uh, none of you have seen a uh, marshal's office or any sign of any sort of law enforcement since coming to town. Well, no wonder there's no progress been made. No one is uh, enforcing the laws for that progress to be made, it seems. Well, uh, if there's no law here, we'll become the law. It's, it's until they get some, at least. So oh, let's meet oh, with your okay. friend and uh, okay. uh, let's lay down the law. Right. Okay. So the four of you are heading around to the back of the saloon? Yep. Which okay. also is near the back of the the Empire office. Right? Uh, no, no. No, it's across. It's behind the saloon. Right? No, so uh, the Empire oh. office is in between a, a general store and a hardware and type a hardware store. store right? uh, yep. Closer to the rail platform. The saloon's at the far end of the street across from the unfinished building. Got right. it. Sorry, uh, I, so, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, with your mental maps now, hopefully a little better buttressed. They're perfect uh, now. You walk behind the uh, the saloon and uh, into the the relative quiet and the the relative shade, uh, where there is shade to be found from the ceaselessly beating sun ahead, uh, and find uh, what looks like a small group of men playing dice or something in the shade behind the saloon. Hmm. Come on, come on! Don't fail me now! Don't fail me now! Ah, snake eyes, son of a bitch. 
This seems to be your crowd, Ransom. Yes, do y'all think that this is who we're looking for? What they say that Slim's guy looks like. So you are all standing there just uh, having this having this conversation nearby? I, I mean, assume we're not like standing right next to them. <laughs> but, but, but back there, yes? Yeah, like yeah, 20 feet away, yeah. yeah. After, after not too long, uh, the men uh, notice you and break away from their game and start jostling each other and uh, pointing over in your direction where they, they all eye you. And uh, one man sitting down in the shadows, not really engaged with the game, just sort of, uh, it looks like he's whittling something. He looks up with uh, a bit of a uh, sour expression on his face. Let's see if there it is. Uh, and says, I hear one of you say the name Slim. Question here on that fellow. I didn't say that name. Yeah. Yes. Friend of ours said that uh, Slim might be willing to give us some information we've been looking for in town. The man looks at the other uh, gentleman around him and stands up from his seated position, revealing his actual height and mass. Uh, he is a very tall man, very solidly built as well, and looks like he spends most of his time in the outdoors. His body is just hard packed cordwood muscle. And he says, yeah, I'm slim. You found me. Now what are you gonna do? And as he says that from both sides of the saloon, two more men, walk around, uh, one from the far side, one, two more up from behind you, the way that you came. There are now eight men, one of them, the very tall and solid looking slim, staring not very friendly at all of you. Well, Mr. Slim, we had a few questions for you and we were told that you could answer them. Did you now? Yes, well, that's what I just said, right? It is, it is. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you got questions. I got answers. Oh. Although you may not much care for the kind of answers that I have, he says, sort of flexing his shoulders back and smushing the palm of his hand against the closed fist of his other hand. And some of the men assembled back there, now moving in a, a little bit of a semicircle out around you all, just chuckle quietly to themselves. Oh, well, I mean, we can decide for ourselves if you want to an give us those answers. Although we, we should probably ask the questions first because that makes more sense in that order. You know what? Why don't we just skip the asking and answering of questions and get to the part where we lick you all and send you packing back to where you came from? Oh, well, lick us. Oh, what? Well, I I don't think that's necessary. I mean, and violence is, is something that generally we try to avoid when we can. Um, at this point, it's very easy to tell, Cherry, that these men who are working on surrounding you back behind this establishment have no such aversion to violence. I mean, Megan knows that. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> Cherry, it seems that uh, we're going to need to do some troubleshooting, as in shooting our troubles, well. literally. My gun's only got six bullets, so uh, you guys are going to have to take out at least two of them. My guns have a lot more. Will do. We're, uh, I'm pulling. Are my you rifle. guys all saying this as? Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. As <laughs> I imagine we were like I mumbling did. this to ourselves. Okay. As as soon as anyone goes for any type of gun, yes, ransom. You had something you wanted to say. Oh, I was just. I I I imagine that the uh, the conversation skills are, are are up to par with everyone. So if we want to divide the information amongst your friends here, we can ask them as well. Oh yeah, yeah. You can ask them all kinds of questions. Though I I fear the only answer is a solid kick in the teeth. Get them, boys. Right. Oh, that line was much better. That's very. And we are in a <laughs> combat now. I will say, yes, you do have guns, and yes, you could use them. However, if you gun down any of these men and kill them, uh, 
there are very good odds with a lack of law around that you might very soon find yourselves at the end of a noose. So keep that in mind as we deal out these initiative cards. Okay. All right. I'm not, I'm not much of a fist fighter. <laughs> Ransom. Scratch killer. Yeah. A five of spades. Alrighty. Wheeler. Yes. A jack of hearts. Hell yes. Cherry. A three of spades. Ooh. An Elden. An eight of clubs. Eight of clubs. Meanwhile, the street toughs and slim Got a four of clubs. Would anyone like to spend a Benny to redraw an initiative card? Yes. One for Cherry. Cherry, you got an eight instead of a three. All right, it's better. That will put you ahead of them. They got a four, right? They did. All right. Anyone else? I'm good. I'll, I'll keep what I got. All right, as they see you all start to steal furtive glances back and forth and your hands kind of casually start to reach for your stashed weapons, they spring their attack and all suddenly rush in, fists up, murder in their eyes. First up, Wheeler. Um, so you said we were, can I take a few steps back to do something or are there people behind us? Uh, they're not behind you. They just okay. kind of fanned out. That you could escape if you wanted to run directly out into the endless plains of Kansas, but they have uh, they have mostly surrounded your uh, your paths back into town. Okay, I do not want to do that. Uh, I do want. I just want to take a few steps back because I do want to try to create a uh, gadget using Gadgeteer. Oh, okay. All right. So you want to create a Gadgeteer gadget right now. Yes. Um, so that is going to take your entire turn. I'm, I'm okay with that. What would you like to create? I would like to create a, uh, a portable, uh, flashbang that I can use. Uh, so this only affects one person. It's not, a, not a grenade sort of thing, but basically it uh, can blind someone. Uh, so I'm using the power, the power is called blind. Blind. Um, okay. So you're basically going to reach into your pack and try and pull out, um, whatever it is you have that can create uh, a loud noise and a bright light, right? Yes, yes. Okay, um, uh, so I believe that is a weird science roll at a minus two for the Gadgeteer Edge, yes? Yes. Uh, and do you have enough power points? Uh, will three power points, which is the max you can gain from that, be enough to do what you would like to do? Yes, blind only costs two, so this should be fine. All right, give us your weird science roll. Okie dokie, that is this one. Uh, oh, that's one shy. I'm gonna use one of my bennies to try again. Okay, Wheeler, one benny down. One benny down. Come on, just need some phosphorus. Uh, oh, it's the same result. I'm gonna keep trying. One more benny. One more benny for Wheeler. I wanna make a thing. This fatigue is really killing me. Nope, not gonna happen. It's got, I got a two, so a zero. But okay, so Wheeler, you call you Mark's call out that you're just gonna try and throw something together, and you start mixing materials. Uh, now, you didn't uh, critically fail any of that, of course. I did right? not. I did not well, critically fail any of those. Good, good for you. Um, uh, you start to mix things together and and hope for the result that you're that you're going for, but something doesn't seem to be working out right, Wheeler. You are not getting a good feeling about this portable little flashing banging device you're trying just, to rig up. Uh, just a moment, gentlemen, I'll be right with you. Uh, it doesn't appear like the men around you have any interest in giving you that moment as they continue to rush in at you as you work feverishly on your device. That's it for Wheeler. Next up is going to be Cherry. Well, the first thing Cherry wants to do is to take her mantis stance. Okay. So you immediately put your hands into kind of a hooked position and start moving around in a distinctly insect-like manner, insect adopting yeah. mantis stance. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then I'm gonna attack the nearest person. I'm gonna, oh, uh, well, can I do um, Fist of Iron before I do that? How does that, is that an action in and of itself? It is an action to, uh, to channel your chi and cast Fist of Iron. So here's my question. Um, with the mantis stance that I just took, is that only effective for this round? No, it is effective until uh, you change stances or choose to get out of it. And since mantis is the only style of superior kung fu that you currently know, it makes sense that you would just stay in mantis stance during a battle. Okay, so, and I choose who, or, 
Anyone Whenever someone fails a fighting attack against you, you can choose to make them distracted or vulnerable. That's what Mantis stance gives you. Oh, that's nice. really good. Uh, yeah, so I will, um, I will uh, cast a fist of iron, and um, to you know, just add the in intimidation part. I want to add the glow shroud. Okay. Now again. Okay. It's been a while since we visited the Weird West, but I will remind all of you, visible, visibly uh, arcane or occult things are uh, very much frowned upon and are just as likely to see you dancing at the end of a noose as uh, murdering innocent townsfolk in cold blood as random outsiders. So okay. be wary <laughs> of anything that gives too much away. I'm just so excited to have an iron fist. I know, so <laughs> a fist of iron. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, then I will not do that and I will just try to attack this go. You can still summon your fist of iron. It won't glow unless you make it. Oh, right, I forgot about that. Sure, sure, I'll do fist of iron first. I might as well. Okay, and then you're gonna do something else afterwards? Oh, yeah, I suppose I could still attack. Yep, you'd just be at the multi-attack penalty. Let's try The multi-action penalty. Okay, all right. So um, you grasp the amulet around your neck tightly. That is, of course, your talisman, and your hindrance says you're reliant upon that to use your abilities. And as you do, you channel your chi directly into your fist of iron. Can you give me a focus roll at a minus two? Yes, indeed. Next up is going to be Elden, so be aware. Yep. I'm going to re-roll that. All right, you're going to spend one of your bennies to re-roll. Hey, oh god, I've thrown a die across the room. Great. Okay. Instead, let's get this new die. Ah, well, that is a three, unfortunately. That is the failure. As, the, as these men rush in at you, you try and focus your chi and summon your fist of iron, but it's too fast. It, they're coming too quickly. There's not enough time, Cherry. You're just going to have to rely on your normal fists. Boop, boop, be doop. <laughs> okay, and you want to make an attack still, right? Oh, right. Yes. I got okay. confused about that first. So as they come in, you cannot summon the Fist of Iron, but you still have your normal fist. Men rush in at you. Do you want to just try and strike out, Cherry? Uh, yes. Give me a fighting roll. Wow, I got a five. A five? Oh, no. With a minus two, that's a three. A uh, three <laughs> is not going to be enough, Cherry. As they rush in at you, you are caught off guard between trying to summon your fist. You lash out desperately with your hooked hand and the man just easily dodges to the side and continues to move in towards you. That is it for you, Cherry. Oh boy. Okay. Not super good looking. Uh, Elden, you are up next. And as you pointed out, you are not much of a fist fighter, but I will say if you all want to use your guns and shoot to wound, I will say for this uh, encounter, that would be a called shot to a limb, and okay. we will uh, we will we will modulate the the normal deadliness of that and say that you can shoot to wound if you can make a called shot to a limb. Well, I, I think to start things off, even though he's not much of a fighter, Eldon's gonna try and avoid pulling his his iron if he can. So, as as the people start coming towards him, he's gonna take the the shot glass that he's got in his hand, and the first guy who gets close, he's just gonna toss it in his face to try and like throw him off and then just throw a punch at him. Okay, all right, so you're gonna try and test him test and him. then uh, and then just strike out at him? Yeah. Okay, so that's gonna be a multi-action penalty. So you are gonna be at a minus two for both of those actions. Yeah, that's fine. I, I, I think he's caught a little off guard by actually starting the fight anyway, so. Okay, so it seems like uh, you're just gonna throw the shot glass directly into his face as he rushes up at you? Uh-huh. That is going to be an athletics roll, I believe. So give me athletics to test him with that. All right. And do I have a negative on this athletics for just throwing something with one hand? Uh, no, that... not, not for one. It was already in your one hand, so uh, yeah. that's just fine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use a Binny to reroll the test because I only got a three on that. You got it, Elden. Uh, okay, so I, I got a three, so not great. A three. Okay, so you throw the shot glass out as he comes rushing towards you, and he bats it away, and it sails off towards the back of the building. And then you rush in and just try and attack him, yeah? Uh, question. I, I, 
does he still have to roll against me? Like, could he end up below a three? And oh yeah, that's true. It is. Uh, it is a test. I sometimes Good forget call. that about tests. <laughs> I do as well. So let's see. Uh, no, he aced it on the die and <laughs> aced it again, and then uh, he got a seventeen. So I'm going to say cool. he catches the shot glass and then wow. just smashes it on the ground as he pulls back to punch you, Elden. Oof. Well, I'm still going to take my my attack. Go for it. Uh, that's fighting, right? That is fighting, and it's going to be at a minus two. Uh, yeah. Do I have the one arm problem with this? Nope. Okay. Oh. All right. Why are you throwing dice? dice? That one is gone. Stop throwing your dice everywhere. Oh, man. Ooh, not a great roll. Um, I'm going to use one more Benny to re-roll this. Just All in right, a hopey, then. hopeful town. Okay. Got a bad start here. Mm, not great. Okay, so that's wow. a one. I mean, it's that a is one, a one after negatives. Okay, all right, Eldon, you go up to uh, just try and just ram into him with your shoulder and throw off his momentum. And he steps to the side and just sort of pushes you a little bit and you stumble uh, off your guard directly into the middle of the uh, mass of melee. You were not able to get any hits off. That is your turn. Damn it. Next up, Ransom. Okay, um, I would like to try to do something here, but first, uh, I want to know, can I get all of the bad guys in a medium blast template? I would say uh, medium blast template, you can get uh, almost all of them. You can get you can get six of them. Two two would be out of it. With, without, without getting any of our... Actually, posse? I believe the theater of the mind guidelines for Suede <laughs> would say, I think it's four people you can catch in a medium blast template. Okay. Okay. Oh, nice. Um, That's, half, I would that's like... not bad. Yeah, I would like to try to do that. And, and if I'm wrong, let's just pretend I'm right for the sake yeah. of moving forward. I here. mean, the book the book is still in the process of being written, right? Well, the uh, Deadlands, Deadlands book. I should know the this Deadlands. from Suede, but let's just yeah. say I do. Four of them um, you can catch. So what I'd like to do is I would like to spend a Benny and deal okay. with the devil. Okay. And, and try to cast Blind. You want to try and cast Blind, and you're going to deal with the devil. All right. Yes. Well, let's pull this up here. So this is a free action that you're taking at the beginning of your round, but Ransom, as this violence breaks out around you, you just focus and move inwardly to a darkened room and a single poker table where something dark and evil waits in the shadows across the table from you and invites you to play. So you are spending your Benny. Yes. That is your ante to deal with the devil. Now you are choosing your power. You're gonna cast blind. I'm casting blind, yes. And how many power points is it going to take for you to cast blind and get that medium burst template for everybody? It's, it's two to cast plus another two to get a medium blast template. So you're looking for four power points altogether, yes? Looking for four, yes. All right, Ransom, make a gambling roll. Cool, cool, okay. cool, cool. Yeah. Um, can I card sharp this? Uh, card sharp won't help you here. Okay. So I can't add a plus two to this game. There is, yeah, you, you don't get a plus two. Because uh, they know. The, the mana two knows. Yeah, you can't cheat with them. Yeah, okay. I got a four. Or maybe you can, but if you can, I'm yeah. not positive that you can. <laughs> maybe they'll change that. Maybe they'll change that in this after, after you ask me that question. You got a four. <laughs> uh, so that is one success. Ransom, do you have your deck of cards handy? I do. You are going to deal yourself five cards, plus you got one success, one extra card. Okay. Uh, sorry, I had cameras working before, and then when we had to restart, they didn't. They Don't worry about working. it. Just so. draw those cards, and then you're going to make your best poker hand of five cards. All right. I'm just going to do it. That's going to take too long. Okay. Yeah, you can just hold them up after. Okay. Uh, so I have. Let's see that hand. I I have uh, I have two tens, a nine, an eight, a six, and a three. Uh, two tens, a nine, yes. an eight, a six, and a three. So I have a pair. Is what I have right now. You have a pair. Now you needed yes. four power points. Is that correct, Ransom? That's correct. A pair grants you three power points. Ooh. Oh. So Ransom. Uh, oh, man. you don't gain the power points that you need from this. 
Well, I can um, still cast blind. I just can't no, do it at a medium blast. No, 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 no ransom. Oh, because I, I have sorry. to. I have. I have to state what I want, and if I don't get it, I don't get it at all. That's correct, and yeah. it's worse than that. <laughs> uh, if the hand doesn't grant you enough power points to cast the spell, the power automatically fails, and the marshal rolls on the backfire table. <gasps> oh, oh my god! Boy. So wait, ransom wait, finished the first round. In your first fight here. You are uh, going to be the first to explore this new bit of Deadlands. I'm doing this for you, chat. So cool. <laughs> I'm so excited. Have Ransom. we succeeded at anything yet? Uh, no, not, not really, no. Not in this fight. <laughs> Ransom, I'm going to roll a d20 here. Uh, that is a three. Okay. Brain drain. The Manitou fries a part of the huckster's mind with energy channeled from the darkest part of the hunting grounds. Uh, your spell casting die drops one type. Oh my god! But only until the end of this encounter. Oh god! Okay. So ransom, okay. you you lay down your hand uh, in your mental game of poker, and you just see a smile widen in the darkness across the way as dark energy courses through you, and your Benny ante is lost. You feel your brain being fried with mystic energy, and suddenly. It's like you forgot how to do all of your hexes properly. You, you feel a bit confused all of a sudden, and you jump back to reality just in time to see what would be your mystic deck of playing cards fizzle out and spark in your hand as they drop from existence. That is a failed deal, Ransom. This is not going well for all of you. However, because I am not in the habit of handing out bennies and because all of you failed, and you managed to get the backfire table the very first time you tried to be a huckster. I'm going to give each of you a bad luck, Benny. Yay. 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 That doesn't oh, bad luck. This Take next it. bit is going to hurt. Two, oh. there are going to be two attacks on each of you from these folks, and one of them is going to be slim. Now let's see, which one of you stands out most dramatically as the leader here? Uh, or the most dangerous one, at least. I'm gonna say everyone but Wheeler. So Cherry, you're one, two, Eldon, you're three, four, Ransom, you're five, six. Cherry, you have drawn Slim's ire. So Slim and another guy are gonna jump in on you. Uh, here comes that little dude's attack. Okay. That is an ace on the D6. That is a seven, what is your parry? Oh man, it's a six. A six, oh, all right, no. he's going to hit. Uh, he just comes up with his fist Cherry and just smacks you right in the face. That is an ace on the damage die. 11 damage, what is your toughness? It is also a six. What is wrong with you? Oh also my God. a six, okay. So, uh, so that is a hit with a raise, Cherry. You will be shaken and wounded unless you soak. I will soak it. Okay, you are going to soak it. Spend your Benny, make your roll. Vigor, right? Uh, that is correct, to soak. Continues to throw me off, okay. I got a four. That is a success. So you do soak the wound and you are not shaken. Cherry, you just get punched in the side of the face and your head snaps to the side and you look back angrily at that guy, not noticing Slim coming up to the side. Let me show you why they call me Slim. And he just opens up his palm and just flat <gasps> slaps you right across the other side of the face. So rude. But he only gets a two. Uh, so Cherry, oh, he did miss. So before before that, uh, you are Mantis style. So if you want to make him distracted or vulnerable. Uh, which one puts a negative to his? A distraction makes his actions less effective. Vulnerable makes yours more effective against him. That's what I want, vulnerable. All right, you make him, he slaps his hand out and you catch it and stare at him and fling it out to the side and then bring a blow in directly to the center of his body. Give me a fighting roll, Cherry. This is your counter attack. And he is vulnerable. Turns out uh, having Manta style in the counter attack edge is a pretty deadly one-two combo. Um, it gives me a plus two? Plus two to your fighting roll. So that's a seven. A seven uh, is enough to hit Slim. Roll damage. Okay. You did not cast Fist of Iron, so it's just gonna be strength plus a D6 for your damage. You're a pretty okay. tough, unarmed martial fighter. Yeah. Uh, that is seven damage. 
Seven damage. Uh, you do that and just send him staggering backwards and he grasps his chest surprised at the force you were able to muster. He is shaken, but not down. Mm. Nice, nice, nice. Progress. All right, that's them. Uh, Wheeler, you got two rushing up at you while you're trying to make this Shoot. device. Here Shoot. come those attacks. That's an ace on the D6. Oh my God. Uh, that's an eight. And uh, what is your parry, Wheeler? Who can guess what my parry is? That and, a stiff wind could knock me down. And you're unarmed, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, I guess yeah, so. So that's at a plus two, so that's a 10 altogether. That is a hit cool. with a raise. I mean, uh, definitely. So this I'm guy going is going to, come to be and doing steal your dice. extra damage here. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, don't steal him too fast. Uh, two damage is what he rolled oh, on 2d6. Oh, what? what is your toughness? I'm guessing I, higher than that. It's Yeah, it's five. At least that's a little higher. <laughs> one guy comes up and just just goes to just knock you one. And as he does that, the powders and uh, little devices you're messing with just spark up a little plume of smoke that goes right into his eyes and mouth and he coughs to clear his vision and misses wildly while the other guy comes up from the other side. That is a four plus two is a six. That is going to be another hit with a raise on you. Yeah, Warren. my parry's a two. <laughs> this is much better. Eight damage. What's your toughness? My toughness is a five, so that's just a one six. That is a hit. You're shaken. Before you can even gloat at the acrid smoke filling this one individual's face, another one comes up from behind you and just pounds you on the back of the oh. head, but not solidly enough <laughs> to do anything but distract you. However, you are shaken, Wheeler. Okay. Two on Elden. Here we go. All right. Um, both of those are fours. Eldon, what's your parry? My parry is a four. And you are currently unarmed, is that correct? I have a knife, but I don't think I've pulled it out yet. I don't think you have. So you are unarmed. They're gonna get to add two to their rolls. Both of them get a six, both of them hit. I would right just here. like to I would just like to narc real quick that a lot of these should get gang up bonuses. Uh we're not worrying too much about that because the fight's okay. kind of spread up around about here and uh also remember that like having allies next to you who are also adjacent. Kind of counteract so that a bit. We'll, so say that probably we'll call it a wash. Um, wash sounds good. One is three damage, Eldon, but one is 11. Okay, well, the Oof. three doesn't do anything to me. You manage to fend off one of the guys, but the other one comes in and gives you a solid kick right to one of your legs. Uh, what is your toughness? My toughness is five. So five. That's a hit uh, with a raise. Yeah. You're going to be shaken and wounded unless you soak. I got to soak. Let's do okay. it. Spend a Benny. Make your roll. All right, I uh, got to remember what my vigor is. Whenever you have a new character, you're always like, ah, oh, what are my stats? Come on. Uh, okay, I got a six. So I got a nine. Nine, all right, you successfully soak it. So he comes up and kicks you right in the leg. You step your leg up, high knee clutched right to your chest and step back down trying to stomp on his foot, but he pulls it back just in time. However, you are still doing all right, Eldon. And then finally, two on you, Ransom. Uh, what is your parry, Ransom? Four. And you are unarmed as well, right? Correct. So one of them is going to hit. But he only gets uh, one damage on his die. So even though you are still reeling from the arcane backlash, you manage to keep your wits about you just to duck and weave and dodge and avoid their attacks. However, this is not looking good for you folks at the end of that first round. Let's hope this next one goes better. Ransom, a king of clubs. Ooh, good one, good one. Wheeler. An ace of clubs. Well, Cherry, a six of clubs. Eldon, ten of clubs. We're all clubs. And for clubs Slim and his boys, a five of diamonds. Ooh. Looks like all of you were going first. Don't oh, waste it. Wheeler, you're up first. Your okay, device not... is not coming together. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to go with a Hail Mary and try to make a different device. Uh, a little more complicated. And I'm going to try to use it. Oh, I, can't, I, can't, I guess I can't use it in the same round, so that won't work. Uh, would I be able to use the same round if you take a multi-action penalty? No, the only thing you can do okay. in the round is uh, build that device. And okay. uh, Wheeler, I will also say you got two people on you. That's going to make this really difficult. Um, so I feel like I'm going to have to give you an additional penalty if you want to continue to try and uh, make a device while they're just mm -hmm. jumping all over you. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, instead, then, I'm going to put my stuff away, pull out my Winchester, and try to shoot Slim. Okay. Uh, so you're going to try and shoot someone else who you are not engaged with, with a ranged weapon? Yes. So you can do that. However, you are going to be made vulnerable. Okay. I agree to these terms. Okay. Well, and are, are you are you aiming not to kill? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Fine. That's going to be a called shot at a minus two then. Okay. 
So as these two uh, fisticuffing young gentlemen come right back up towards you, Wheeler, you pull the rifle off of your back and aim it at their leader and try okay. and aim a shot to wound. I want to get his kneecap, right in the kneecap. Oh man, okay, to wound for life. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, take him, that'll take him down a notch. Uh, that's an ace. That's Ooh. good. That's another ace. That's Ooh. really good. Uh, that is 14 minus, you said, uh, do I have any minus penalties? Minus two. Uh, minus two, you said? Yeah. So it'll be minus three because I have fatigue. Okay, so uh, that's 11. still going to be an 11, which is still cool. a success with a raise. So uh, you're going to roll the damage for your rifle okay. plus an additional D6 for hitting him in a vital spot, which, as previously established, is his kneecap. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the damage bonus of that? Is it plus four? Uh, no, that's just an extra. You add a D6. You just got a raise. There's no, there's no damage bonus for a called shot to the limb. You're just oh, doing this okay. so that you don't kill him. I understand. Okay. Uh, so my damage is so far 10, uh, and then I add one more D8, because this is a Winchester rifle, so 11. 11, 11 yeah. damage, uh, and I believe Slim was already shaken as well, right? Oh, and vulnerable. Um, yes, he is still vulnerable with the plus two, so, uh, you do 11 damage to him. That's going to be a hit with a raise, and he was already shaken. So, Wheeler, you pull the rifle off your back and squeeze off a shot, sighting it just briefly, and blow his kneecap off. Oh. And blood immediately just spurts out from his leg as Slim's eyes go wide and his face goes pale, and he leans down to grasp his leg, and he just kind of croaks out a sound of pain before his eyes kind of flutter up in his head and he just collapses onto the ground. And as he does that, the rest of the guys that were attacking you all just freeze and they, they look around at each other and they say, all right, all right, all right, okay, yeah. Big man pulling a gun out into a fist fight. Sure, sure. Just what we would expect from a couple of Empire Rail goons. All right, all right. We surrender. We surrender. Good, Let us just good. take our friend to the dock and 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 leave you be. Oh, uh, no. uh, hold on. He has some questions to answer before he goes anywhere. He doesn't have anything to answer for you. Do you not what? understand what this was? You've been set up. What? All right, then. We've got some questions for you, then. And uh, oh, no. Elden pulls out his gun. Who set us up? Who told you where Slim was, idiot? Well, that, that was, was rude. Ransom's gambling friend. And you're telling us that he's the man in charge. <laughs> We're not asking who gave us the information. We know that, obviously. We're asking who set us up. Who is it who wants all of us dead? Damn near everyone in town, I'd wager. Why? Because you're a piece of shit Empire Rail scumbag. <laughs> all right, all right. You're a piece of delightful sunshine Empire Rail scumbag. Is that better? It is. Well, thank you. I mean, the words are better, but it, it sounds like you're saying it the same way you said the other thing that wasn't as nice. Just let us attend to Slim and be on our way, and we promise we won't hassle you no more, but we can't make any promises for the rest of them folks once they hear you done shot Slim's leg off. Uh, well, you started the hassling, my friend. We were just minding our own business, and you came on to us. I don't see no witnesses here to that fact, so I suppose it would be your word against all of ours now, wouldn't it? And how well do you think that's gonna go over in this town? All right. Wow. Well, I reckon you be careful about what it is you say. Because right now, you've got a little bit of attention from Empire. But if you got a lot more, I don't think your town would like how it's going. Now, I think it'll work out best for you and everyone who lives here. If you just let us do our business. And don't ha slow us down any more than you already have. As you say, lackey. And they keep their eyes on, on all of you and Wheeler with his rifle out as they go over to, to lift Slim up, still largely unconscious. It takes most of them to lift the dead weight of this very large man and carry him 
moaning and and crying out in his unconsciousness, often away, hopefully to attend to his wound. I, I, I did what I thought was best. I'm sorry that it got so violent. Wheeler, no more shooting anybody unless they've pulled guns on us first. All right, he, he's going to be fine. He'll never, you know. We could have a whole again. town full of people with guns coming after us now. All right, well, it wasn't You've looking. You've got to be extra careful. It wasn't looking like it was going in our favor, so I made a call. Wheeler, um, despite what Eldon's saying, I'm going to give you a Benny for that because had you not decided to go right for Slim, it seems like that fight could have gone very, very poorly for all of you. Woohoo! I'll take it. Thank you. Look, we just need to be careful now. The entire town, well, they've got reason to come after us, and, and they already didn't like us. Well, it seems we were duped by your friend, Ransom. Ransom seems a bit shaken, but is uh, coming back to himself. Ransom, you're, you're able to, to work through the mind-numbing fog that the Manitou inflicted on you, and you, you feel your knowledge slowly returning like, like pins and needles of a leg being awoken from sleep. H have I seen this happen to Ransom before? You've seen all manner of things happen to Ransom before over the course of your friendship. All right, give him some space. Ransom, you're doing okay? Uh, I'll be fine. Yes. All right. It looks like Claude had other plans for us. He's a, a rancher around these parts. Probably doesn't like that the rail line moved through his territory of some kind, something like that. I don't know. It's not nothing we haven't seen before with uh, with Empire, but this this whole town don't usually get this blowback. Well, from now on, I think we're just going to have to assume that every one we come into contact with is going to be hostile. As you are talking about that, you hear coming up from behind the corner a voice calling out, Well, Slim, did you go ahead and finish up with our friends? And uh, Claude Guilford turns the corner and sees the four of you standing there and looks around for Slim and his boys and sees that they're nowhere to be found. Oh, well, I, I suppose Slim must have gotten too far in his cups today and uh, maybe uh, drank himself uh, into an early stupor. Sorry to send you back here on a wild goose chase. I'll just be heading back inside well, to- uh, since it turns out Slim couldn't answer our questions and I'll pull my gun out and kind of casually point at him. Maybe you can help us out a little bit more directly. <laughs> we already know that you, uh, that it was a trap. Okay. Okay. Let's all, uh, let's all let cooler heads prevail here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I admit it. Uh, I may have sent you all into a, a little bit of a, uh, a sticky situation, but <laughs> we was just funning. We, uh, didn't mean nothing serious by it. Well, I think Funny. your friend's knee is going to debate whether it was serious discussion or not. Oh, that of fact. Well, uh, he ain't no friend of mine, and uh, I'm sorry to have uh, gotten up as mixed up in this as uh, as the four of you are. So, uh, I'll I'll just be on my way, and uh, we'll let bygones be. What you say? Uh, well, I, I, how far away is he from us? Oh, not very far at all. Especially once you pulled the gun on him, he froze up real quick after that. Well, let me put it this way, pal. We didn't want to antagonize this here community, but since we already blew off somebody's kneecaps, I don't imagine it would make us look that much worse if we, I don't know, put a bullet in your arm. Now, we would love to not have to do that, but I think that's going to be up to you, honestly. All right. I take your point. What, what is it you want to know? What if people here got against Empire Rail? What ain't they got against Empire Rail? A bunch of no good, down and dirty double dealers and liars and thieves. And all right, crooks. all right, we get it. What happened to Goss? Who? The Empire who? representative who came before us. He was supposed George to set Goss. up that office over there. He left. He left. He just left. Yep. Packed up and left town. 
Got what? too uh, unfriendly for him, I suppose. That's right against what he was supposed to do. So that seems quite strange. Elgin, oh. uh, why don't you uh, train your gun a little closer to that kneecap? Maybe we could be known like a kneecap gang of some sort. Uh, that's what these uh, ruffians do, right? They make a, a, a show about doing the same thing and having a name built out of it. So just point it at the kneecap and we'll see how much talking he does. That's I'm going to say that sounds like an intimidation attempt. Uh, okay. And uh, I'm going to give you a plus two for that, uh, cool. Wheeler, because... Uh, Elden does indeed have a gun out, and Elden, uh, do you go along with that and sort of let it lazily trail down to the kneecap? Yeah, I think I'm like, well, you know, I'm open to suggestions, as it were. <laughs> uh, I'll support. Oh, yes, support please too. do. Because <laughs> okay. um, Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll uh, you know, I don't know around these here parts, this, uh, this town seems pretty far from, you know, lots of doctors and this gentleman seems to be the closest doctor to you, so you might not want to uh, go against that. Okay. All right. Give me. Uh, I'm gonna say taunt. Okay. Taunt. Oh, no, not okay. not you. Uh, oh, me. sorry, Wheeler. Me. First, this first the support roll. Right. This is support. Right. Taunt unless you think something else. Ransom. Um, could I change it a little bit for more persuasion and just be like, why don't you? Uh, Give us a little bit, you know, just like the friendly game of poker. Why don't you give us a little bit and we won't take a little bit. How's that? A little bit of make the smart choice persuasion, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Give me that you persuasion could... roll. Okay. I mean, you could always call our bluff. Bleh. Um, no, bleh. We aren't That's... very good at bluffing. I'll just tell you that right now. So that means that we might actually shoot out your kneecap. Don't say <laughs> that. Don't tell them. Well, I gotta say, life without a limb ain't as unlivable as some people would lead you to believe. Oh, I'm gonna use. Yeah, a, I'm gonna good. use a Benny. Gonna All right, use Benny. using a Benny ransom to re-roll that support. That's the difference between a leg and an arm, though. That's a four. Uh, a four? Okay, yeah. so uh, a plus one, Wheeler. So you'll be rolling your intimidation with a plus three altogether. Well, okay. Cherry, I've so, seen people with some mighty fine pegs. That negates all of my negatives. Good point. Uh, I got a four. A four. Okay. It worked. Uh, he <laughs> I mean, aced it. Okay, well. He got an eight. All right. All right. I, I can tell that you folks are agitated, and I can tell that you're angry. And I even understand why you would be angry at me. Even though I, I must say, having you get a little bit roughed up and then sent home with your tail between your legs beats the alternative. Uh, should things take a take a nastier turn out here, so maybe you should see this as an opportunity to to head back where you came from while you still can. Well, <laughs> but that's not why we're here. We're here to do our job, so we don't plan on leaving anytime soon until we do that job. So you might as well help us with that and then we can be on our way. So I take it you are not going to release me until I give you something that satisfies you. Should we just shoot him in the foot? Let's shoot don't him shoot, in the don't foot. Don't shoot him in the foot. Don't shoot, don't shoot me in the foot. Uh, listen, listen. You ain't gonna get nothing out of anybody here. All right? There ain't no law in Flat Edge. And there ain't no Empire Rail in Flat Edge, neither. There ain't nobody here that Flat Edge don't want to be here. Why's that? Well, listen, you want to know more about this stuff? You want to talk to somebody who gives a damn? Uh, you want to talk to the man who is the uh, de facto head of affairs here in Flat Edge? Who's that? Quincy Nickelmeyer. Owner well, of the Nickelmeyer Ranch, biggest ranching operation uh, for uh, who knows how many miles. Well, no offense, but the last time you sent us to someone, it was a bit of a, a trap. So how do we know you're telling the truth this go without double checking those kneecaps? Very astute, very astute, Cherry. Thank you. Well, all I can do is give you my word of honor that my kneecaps are more important to me than uh, giving you a difficult time of day and running you around unnecessarily. After all, if I was to send you to uh, someplace else, undoubtedly, 
uh, you would find your way back to me. Oh, and your kneecaps. And my kneecaps, just uh, so. Well, I have an alternative solution. Why don't you introduce us to him? That's a, a good thought. Very I mean, good. I, I would rather not. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't asking. All right. Uh, as you are the individuals with the guns, I suppose I could uh, make an introduction. Well, that is very kind of you. Very gentlemanly. Thank you. Hell, he just as, as a token of good faith and to show you how attached I am to my kneecaps, uh, why don't I uh, go ahead and arrange for transportation as, as well? I'll uh, hire up some, some horses from the stable for you since I know you came by rail and uh, we can all ride out there together. What do you say? Uh, no hard like feelings? Me. No missing kneecaps? Not yet. We don't shoot our friends' kneecaps out. All That's right. As long right. as you're one of our friends. Well, uh, I think that works out pretty well for you. Well, let's just say I, I sure hope to be at this point. Uh, shall I go and uh, fetch the horses? You well, shall. I think we're go we'll go with you, but yes. You'll go with that, that. That makes sense. All right. Well, as you say, come on with me. And he uh, walks out into the into the main street with all of you sticking close behind and uh, making sure that your weapons are not too far out of reach, I imagine. Yes? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sounds right. Um, he goes over to the stable, is able to secure a number of animals for you and uh, leads you all off outside of town. Um, and after maybe an hour or so of uh, horseback riding, you make it out towards uh, what must be the Nickelmeyer Ranch. Uh, it's a sprawling compound, and the ranch house at the center of it is a work in progress as it stands. Uh, you can see a big central ranch house, but you can see construction of buildings and add-ons to that house, house happening all around as cattle mill about in pens and, and moo and horses stamp nervously nearby. You see uh, what looks like a passel of men off at a house that are, are some sort of structure that's being built, hammering away. And you see uh, what looks like a, uh, a large stately individual sitting on a rocking chair on the front porch of the ranch house. Now look, that there, that, that's, that's Nickelmeyer himself, all right? Now he's a, he's a friendly enough individual, but uh, he and I got mixed up in some some bad business deals back in the day. So uh, perhaps this could be as far as I take you. Well, I... that wasn't quite what we said. An introduction is what we asked for. Well, maybe if it is that you really don't want to go in, say hello yourself, that a few of us can go up there and make sure that it's not a trap while you stay back here. Is that a good idea? I can see that you are not going to let this uh, pass quietly. So, sure. You know what? Why don't we just shortcut the whole thing and I'll uh, ride on in and give you an introduction as we agreed. So that sounds sublime. Thank you. Ain't it nice negotiating? Yeah, <laughs> just, just peachy. So, uh, uh, can I ask a question real quick? Yeah. Did my tummy ache fatigue go away from flowing It did, up? yes. Okay, great, thank you. After this, it has gone away. Uh, and we did spend about an hour on horseback uh, heading out this way. So those of you who spent PowerPoints, uh, you, there wasn't a lot in, involved in what you were doing when you were riding out there. So you have uh, regained them at your normal hourly rate, which should be so I have five. all my PowerPoints back. Yeah, you've got all yours back, Elvin. <laughs> um, you hadn't spent any ransom, so you're okay. Yeah. I spent two. Um, They're back. Thank you. You guys uh, make uh, make Claude get off his horse and open up the gate to uh, let you onto the property, and then he gets back up with a little bit of cajole, cajoling and rides out ahead of you. Uh, Quincy, Claude. Yep. Listen, before uh, before you say anything, I ain't here of my own volition. All right. These here individuals are uh, just some friendly troubleshooters from. Empire Rail, he shouts out loud enough for Quincy and anyone nearby to hear. Uh, so they they wanted to uh, talk to the man in charge, and I, I told them 
Well, that's that's you. The man sitting on his rocking chair on the front porch is a, a, a large and portly individual, but it's a portliness that uh, comes from softened muscle that uh, is part of what comes along with age. Let's see if I, I can't get him to focus so up weird. there. It's so like it's censoring close. the, the, you said the, he the was, text. You said he was soft. So there, there, it, is, there it is. There he is. Oh. There he is. Um, he, is he is dressed in, in fine clothing, but it has the, the look of uh, wear and tear. Like he's not afraid to get his hands dirty either. And he just regards Claude uh, as, you, as you sit there and turns and looks at the rest of you. Is uh is what Claude here says, is that true? That's well, right. We're troubleshooters. Now, of course, if there's no trouble, we don't have to do any shooting. But uh it seems like uh some of uh, Empire's former representatives have not been all that welcome in this town. Huh. Claude, if it's all the same to you, I'd appreciate it if you vacated my property before too much time has passed. And see, I got a long memory and uh, I don't like to see folks that have done some backstabbing deals with me hanging around my place of residence. And uh, Claude looks a, a bit nervous. Will all of you give me a notice roll? Yes, indeed. Will do. Peace. Oh, well, it was bound to happen. First crit fail of the game. Oh. Oh, all right. A crit fail from uh, Wheeler. Uh, you got a nine ransom? Nine, got a nine for ransom, yes. nine for Eldon, a two for you, Cherry. Cherry, you are focused on uh, Claude and making sure that he doesn't do anything twitchy and get away. Um, Eldon and Ransom, you have spent a little more time out in the field doing this sort of business, and you can tell Claude's nervous. Understandably so. You've got a gun trained on him. Um, However, this, this Quincy individual seems a bit nervous as well. And as he's talking to Claude, he keeps cutting his eyes around uh, like he is looking for, for some kind of trouble. Um, Wheeler, you are looking over towards the construction. And as you do, a strong gust of prairie wind comes blowing up from that direction and just blows grit and trail dust directly into your eye. Uh, you are going to be at a minus one on all site-based notice rolls for the rest uh, of this session. I should have had my goggles on. Oh. Uh, well, I, 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 with with your permission, uh, kindly Empire Rail employees, I, uh, I will take well, my leave. Well, sir, I'm sorry, but uh, call me sentimental, but Claude here has become something of a friend to us, and well, I think it's fair to say we would all be more comfortable if he was with, if he was here too. Quincy kind of looks up at you from his rocking chair and says, uh, what's your name, son? Eldon. Eldon Fallon. Eldon Fallon. At your service. Well, let me say this. I don't mind sitting for a spell and, and chatting with you fine folks, but uh, I ain't willing to do so if this piece of human trash is going to be here listening in the whole way. So I'll say, if you came out here to talk to me, you done wasted your time if you're gonna insist on keeping this low down, dirty rat around. Now, Eldon, <laughs> well, uh, right. Quincy, uh, I think we can all agree that Claude is not so much a friend of ours as he is a necessity. Uh, if he makes you uncomfortable, well, he certainly doesn't make us comfortable. But if you're willing to sit down and parlay with us without him here, I think we could work that way. Well, you heard the man and the, and the lady. Thank you very much. Your gentility uh, is, is not betrayed by your visage, but I see that still waters run deep. So uh, perhaps I should just take this as my opportunity to head on back to my homestead and my my wife and children, whom I have and would like very much to return to. Do we think he's like lying? It's, he, he seems like super. Do, does it feel Claude? like there is another reason that he wants to leave? Uh, 
<laughs> Give me a notice roll. It seems like yes to <laughs> me, Jordan, but... Well, let's see what Eldon notices. Yes. Uh, I got a seven. A seven, a success. Um, Eldon, uh, you don't know Claude very well, but you can tell that he hasn't been too comfortable spending time with the four of you training a gun on him and forcing him to do things. And he seems even less comfortable under Quincy's uh, quite, quite uh, simmering rage-filled eyes. So uh, you don't get the impression that he's not being truthful about not wanting to be here for any number of reasons. Sure. All right. And you go I'll, on back, but don't leave town. We want to find you when we come back. I mean, I live here, so uh, you're far more likely to leave town than I. Yeah, well. Rat. Well, then I, I, I bid the four of you good day. And I wish you the best of luck in your uh, remaining stay here in Flat Edge and a quick and expeditious uh, retreat back to whence uh, you came. Uh, good day, everybody. I would and like, to, as he goes, I would like to, in my pocket, uh, I want to cast trinkets. Okay. And I want to uh, create a little, like, uh, a needle or pin of some kind. Okay. And then as he goes, I'm going to slap the back of the horse with the with the pen. Okay. All right. Um, so are you going to be dealing with the devil to cast trinkets, Ransom? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. No. <laughs> oh, all right. I see. Uh, once you deal with the devil shy. for what amounts to a fun prank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm overconfident. I'm not that overconfident. <laughs> then spend your power points and Done. make your spell casting roll. Okay. Oh, boy. Which has gone? Oh, wait, am I back up now? It was oh, yes, only down yes, to your the fight, right? Yes, it was only till the end okay. of the encounter. Okay. Ooh, aced it on the eight. <laughs> uh, that's a thirteen. A thirteen. Okay, that's going to be a yeah. success with a raise for sure. Um, so uh, I'm just going to roll a quick notice roll for. Uh, Quincy here. Uh, Claude oh. has already turned and is making ready to go, but. You know, a hex, a, a spectral deck of cards appearing in your hand is. Well, I, I'm doing it in my in my pocket. If, of course, if you possible. are. Yeah. And because you're a card sharp, I am at a minus two for this notice roll, but it it is still a possibility. Okay. But he rolled a three minus two, which is a <laughs> one. So you are successfully Yay. able to disguise that in the pocket of your vest there, uh, ransom, as you right. pull out a pin and give the horse a good slap with it. Now get on home. Whoa, boy! And the horse just takes off, and Claude just, it's all he can do to hold on to the reins and manage to stay horsed as he just goes galloping, some sort of half gallop, half canter, half sliding off the side of the horse back off of Quincy's property. <laughs> I don't know what you did just there, son, but I gotta say, it does me a world of good to watch that foppish blowhard fail. <laughs> Well, listen, I don't, uh, I don't much care for him either, and uh, I just wanted to give him a good, uh, good goodbye, as it were. Um, Quincy, am I call you Quincy, Mister uh, Nicolai? Yes, that's uh, as as you're talking, a voice pipes up from the the side of you folks, and you look over and see uh, a man, maybe in his late twenties, very gaunt, standing there, drenched in sweat, holding a hammer from the construction site. Somehow he just managed to just walk up right near you folks without you even hearing him. Uh, Mr. Nickelmeyer, sir, everything okay here with your uh, visitors? He seems a little twitchy and nervous, this young man. And Mr. Nickelmeyer also seems twitchy and nervous around uh, this individual. Uh, no, everything is uh, is fine, Matthew. These uh, these folks were brought to me by uh, well, you know, Claude. So uh, I, I don't think you got anything to worry about. I, I got this well in hand here. You just go back and uh, work with the rest of the boys, and then let's let's see how much we can get done today. Oh, oh okay. Matthew just kind of looks at all of you and and looks back at Quincy, and says. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, okay. Okay, Mr. Nicomar. Well, you just uh, give a shout if anything goes awry. And he turns and, and walks back to the construction area, shooting glances back over his shoulder as he goes. Uh, Quincy, meanwhile, just watches him walk back off wordlessly. What uh, do you think would go awry? Well, uh, <laughs> I suppose if you folks came in here on that train I heard that was coming in earlier than you've already encountered uh, the local attitudes towards Empire Rail. Yeah, I can't say we got a very friendly welcome. Well, can't say as though I, I blame the folks of Flat Edge. Do you? Well, no. to be entirely honest, we have no idea. I I think you've caught us on the back foot now, and I feel like we've made a terrible impression. Maybe you could fill us in on exactly the wrongs that Empire Rail did here. Besides so trying to bring civilization to the town. Trying to bring civilization to the town, is that what you uh Well, that's what tends did. to happen when the railroad comes through town and makes somewhere more of a hub. Well, that sure was what we were all hoping for, wasn't it? We were all mighty excited to be an empire rail spur all right tell me the four of you what what is your uh affiliation with empire how do you fit into this equation well as we said before we're troubleshooters and uh we were sent out here to find out what's going on huh. and uh what is it that you have gleaned so far as Not far much. as we can tell. Sorry, go on. I just said not much of anything as far as we can tell, except that nothing is as it's supposed to be, and everyone seems to hate us, even though we haven't done a single thing as far as I know. Seems like our telegraph line has been torn down. The office has been shuttered up and painted over, and everyone who's been sent has been driven out of town one way or another. Well, telegraph line came down... Uh, during a lightning strike. And uh, as for the rest, well, we ain't seen hide nor hair of any Empire Rail folks for many months now. And I think if the four of you know what's good for you, perhaps you should make yourselves scarce too. Was well, that a, th a threat? No, it ain't. He kind of casts his, his eyes around uh, furtively again, as though he's worried about being overheard. No, miss, that ain't a threat. Just a friendly bit of advice. You see, well, Empire wasn't exactly a uh, friendly presence here in town. Now, we'd all heard Joshua Chamberlain was a good, upstanding, and honorable man, and he may well be. I can confirm that he is. But uh, just because a man's got a good reputation as an honorable man doesn't mean that the people he hire have to live up to that same image. Empire Rail been nothing but crooks and thieves and pillagers taking what they want from the good people of this community with impunity, flashing their credentials around and talking a big game about how the folks here owed their continued existence to the upcoming Empire Rail Spur. Now, that's how it started. But as they started to get more and more emboldened, they started taking more. Like what? Well, Miss, since this is mixed company, and I am a, a gentleman. I don't feel comfortable fully explaining what atrocities it was that the Empire Rail people inflicted upon this town. Just Empire doesn't hire men like that. So you say that, Eldon, but give me a common knowledge roll as you do. Uh -oh. Yeah. Seven. Seven. A success, just one shy of a raise. Now, as you're saying that, your reflexive defense of Empire Rail and Joshua Chamberlain leaps to your lips, but in your mind, you know 
that Joshua Chamberlain is the president of this company, but the board of directors is made up of a group of very powerful men in the finance and other industries back east. And they want things for the company that stand uh, in opposition to what Joshua Chamberlain has always stood for. And uh, they do a fair amount of hiring themselves. So it is entirely possible that it was a, uh, a bad group that got sent here to Flat Edge. Eldon definitely knows that, but, but he, he likes to think the best of Empire. Like, it's still, see, it's still like a family to him to an extent. Sure, but you do know as well that there could be truth to what Quincy's saying. Yeah. Now, uh, can uh, I do something while this conversation's happening? Please do. Can I uh, create a contraption using Gadgeteer to uh, cast Farsight uh, onto the construction site? Farsight? Yes. Onto uh, the construction site. Yes. It lets you see over great distances and allows you to read lips or read fine print up to a mile distant. Okay. I, don't, I know it's not that far, but at least I can get a better view of if they're talking or doing something that isn't construction. Sure. So while um, while they are having this conversation with Quincy, you just start digging through your bag and pulling out various different glass implements. I'll, I'll, take, a, I'll, I'll take a few steps away. I don't want to do it at the table, but I'll be like, excuse me for a moment. I'll just step away for a second. Sure. Give me a weird science roll at a minus two. Okie dokie. Uh, that is a five. A five. Okay. So that is a success. So you managed to cobble together. Uh, you, you get a little bit of copper wiring uh, kind of looped up between some lenses and then run that up to the, uh, are you, I assume you're still wearing this headgear unless you notate yes. otherwise. No, yeah. All right. Um, I, I, for, I have forgotten to react to you the proper way uh, <laughs> with everyone, but suffice it to say, wearing this gigantic headpiece gets you no shortage of strange looks. And uh, you manage to somehow electrify the lenses in a way, I, I don't want to get into mm -hmm. the science of it, but let's just say it allows you to see pretty far away. And you bring the lenses up to your eyes and it's like you're looking at the construction site from right next to it. You see about five or six men just doing some work and hammering things in, lifting boards, uh, moving things around, you know, normal work uh, in raising a building. Um, and you can't See, they don't appear to be having conversations with each other. Every now and then you'll see their mouths move as they look at someone, but it seems like they're calling out requests or things. However, that, that young man that came over a moment ago, Matthew, is um, up, up climbing a ladder up to a, uh, a rafter that he was working on. But the whole time, he just keeps shooting glances back over his shoulder at you all. And uh, you notice every time he does... Uh, he just has this concerned look on his face and his eye keeps twitching. Interesting. All right. Thank you. Now, listen, I, I, I told you uh, what it is I, I have to tell you. So, so, so what else do you need from us? All right. It, listen, your, 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 your friends, they ain't here. All right. They proved themselves to be dishonorable men and they left took everything it was they had with them. So I, I would send back to your to your office and tell them that those men were crooks and thieves and done absconded with the materials and that we we are fine just driving our cattle the old fashioned way uh, by, by horse. Uh, we, we do just fine business wise that way. We, we're in no need of this spur no longer. All right. So so Empire can just consider this this agreement terminated. Quincy. Can you tell me, sorry, my, my mind wanders uh, at times. Can you tell me, what are you building over there? Well, that's, uh, well, that's just to be a, uh, a, a storage area, a nicer barn for, for stabling the horses. Uh, we're in the midst of expanding, and I anticipate hiring some more uh, hands to help me out around the ranch, especially if we're going to be driving our cattle, as we have decided to do. So, uh I got to have quarters for more people. I got to have uh, storage and stables for the horses. And I, I will make no, no secret of it. I have been a successful individual. So I have the, the resources to spare to, to make this operation the best it can be. As I said, financially, we are doing just fine without Empire Rail's assistance. And where did you, sorry, where did you get all these materials? How did they come? Well, by, by wagon train, of course, the, the, the usual traditional way. Mm-hmm. Wagon train. Okay. 
have you had any uh, cattle that has gone missing lately? He, he kind of looks back at you and says, well, uh, of course, miss, uh, missing cattle are just part of the the day-to-day -day operation. You know, we can't protect all of them, especially with herds as large as ours. Um, well, it's what about cattle that uh, had some nasty animal bites? I, I, I can't say, miss, but I, I can't say, I, I'm sure there's no shortage of wild critters out here that would uh, love to take a bite out of one of my beeves. Uh, that's yes, maybe why I imagine alligator. they go missing. Maybe an alligator is out here somewhere taking bites out of your cows. All right, Wheeler. Well, it's, it's certainly possible. Mr. Nickelmeyer. Now, if you all have been wronged by Empire Men, which could have happened, I'm sure that there's a way that we could deal in some sort of reparations and continue with the business of Empire Rail in Flat Edge. Now we've put too much already into building the lines out here and getting everything ready. We can't just let this business die. You know it'd be good for the town. Well, as I said, uh, your employees up and absconded, uh, but why don't you go ahead and, and take that, that information back to your, uh, your superiors and uh, they can always wire us a message and we can uh, finish this business up uh, that way. Would you happen to have the names of these employees that we could take back to our higher ups? Well, you, you mean you don't know their names? I thought you came out here. Well, well, was it just the one? Was it just Goss or were there more than just him? He, he, he sits back as you say that. So, so you know Goss? Well, he was our contact as we were supposed to meet him here and clearly he's gone or so we've heard. Well, yeah, he was the leader of them. He's gone, took them all with him. Ah, he's a terrible taking... beast of a man. Goss, he's huh. a beast of a man. Yeah, can't say as I miss him. Well then, do you have any idea where he went? No, oh, nor do I care to. Did he just disappear one day? Did he ride off into the West? Any they information? They left. They packed up and left. Hell if I know, but we ain't seen them since then, and ain't none of us been anything but glad about it. Damn it. Well, we don't seem to be getting any new information here, so could you maybe point us in a direction that we could go? My direction <laughs> is back home where you came from. All right, but we I get, get it. The... We've heard this song before. All right, all right, all right. He, he again seems to get kind of agitated and he, he looks around and then sort of motions you in a little bit closer. Listen, I can tell that, that you folks are at least halfway decent individuals, all right? Now I'm telling you, the best thing for you to do is to turn and to head back home. But if I cannot convince you, and if you must satisfy your curiosity, then perhaps you should take a look around at some of the, the new construction back in town. You might find some answers there. All right. Like, what kind of answers? Answers that you'd be better off not knowing. Now, I, I done told you the best thing for you to do is head back home. And if you got half a brain in your heads, you'll do what I say. All right, Mr. Nickelmeyer, you've been very helpful. Let's head back to town. Let's, Let's see if we can get into the old Empire office and check out some of the new construction. Or, please. I beg of you, consider just writing this up as a loss and heading back east. I'm afraid our uh, our superiors would not allow us to do that. Mr. Nickelmeyer. Whether you like it or not. Sorry. No, no, whether go on. You, 
whether you like it or not, Empire Rail is going to be coming through Flat Edge. If we leave, there's just going to be someone coming after coming after us. And I see. Dutiful crowd before you. Well then, I suppose you must do what you must do. Well, you have a good evening. Yes. Thank you for your help. You've been uh, helpful. Yeah. Yeah, well, safe travels to you. All right. Okay. And you guys leave? I yeah. guess we probably do. Well, um, did Garav see, did Wheeler see anything else like in the, the construction that was going on? It, it doesn't seem like they're building anything particularly suspicious, right? He saw what I told him. Uh, did it look like, I mean, did it look like what he was saying was being built is what being built? I mean, like, it's the from what I saw of, the framework. It's the frame of a building, so it's kind of hard to tell. They're just putting in the the bones of it, but it's a okay. large building, and it, it okay. looks like the kind of building one would expect to see on a ranch. Okay, uh, gentlemen, lady, I have a theory. If you would hear me out, um, where are you guys talking? I we're think probably we're going to be on the horses. Do we have horses still? Do you leave the horses with us? I yeah. Don't. Yeah. Claude, oh, okay. Claude cool. left the horses with you. So took his horse. You guys right. are getting on the horses and heading back to town as you talk? Yes. Okay. Um, as you do, uh, the sun is getting lower in the in the sky. You got here uh, in in the like uh, the one o'clock area, and it's taking you a fair amount of time. It's it's heading in towards uh, towards sunset and evening. By the time you get back to town, you wager the sun should be just about ready to set. Um, gentlemen, lady, a theory, if you will hear me out. Uh, but first a question, does anybody actually, has, has, has anybody here seen this Goss, uh, this George Goss before? I have not. I heard, heard of the man, but yeah, didn't know much about him. Well, unless we can get some sort of description, my theory, and it could be completely false, is that there might be some sort of fraudulent identity going on. It might be that some sort of ruffian or otherwise may have taken up the guise of George Goss and then uh, paraded himself around as Empire Rail, uh, taking up our business and making a scene. Now, we don't know what the original George Goss looks like, so this could be completely false. He could have also just have done this himself. Uh, we know our uh, Empire Rail does hire some strange uh, individuals from time to time, and it's completely possible he just went to sour himself. Well, uh, I, I'm inclined to agree with you, Doc. I think that uh, it might be something of a false identity situation. However, I do think that the, uh, I, I think that the potential of it being one of our men is relatively low in the sense that if someone wanted to double cross Empire Rails, we'd be sent after them. Well, we, we, but there's no telegraph, so they may not have gotten a, a message back in time is the issue, and we can't get a message there to find out a description. Well, also, of this, it's in their best interest to make the town do what Empire Rails wants to do, not get run out of town. Well, right. no matter what the actual situation is, we need to gather more information before we do any sort of reporting back or leaving or anything like that. Agreed. Now, we don't have anywhere to stay in this town, and if our reception at the saloon and everywhere else is anything to go by, people aren't going to be that open to letting us into their homes. Well, I figured we'd stay on the train. I don't know if that's entirely safe. Did the train stay? Is the train still here? Uh, no, the, the oh. train essentially, uh, it, it dropped you off. They, they continued on uh, to another place. Uh, Joshua Chamberlain gave you use of this train, but even so, he has to make it somewhat financially viable for him. So they have a delivery to make uh, one town down and they'll be returning the next morning to pick all of you up. I see. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. We can just stay in, in, in out here in the wilderness. It's well, good to be well, close to nature. Clarification. The, the train is coming, the train, we know the train is coming tomorrow morning, right? That was the plan. So we have to like be on it then, right? Or at least talk to them at that sure. point. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. 
Doc, when you uh, you and Cherry uh, looked at the uh, uh, the telegraph pole, did did it look like it was storm brought down? I couldn't tell from my initial uh, search of the structure. Uh, I did hear a claim from a woman who did did, did not uh, care for us that it was a storm of some sort. So that could hold true, or that they were all fed the same lie, or are holding on to the same lie. I'm not sure. I hate well, to interrupt, but just really quickly, for those of you that watch Wild Cards normally, this will be no surprise to you, but um, <laughs> because of our somewhat late start and uh, and some other developments, we might go a bit longer than I was anticipating. So uh, <laughs> bear with us, folks. Okay. Um, I mean, well, hey, we're still well ahead of midnight. <laughs> well ahead that's of true. midnight. That's we're doing true. great. I mean, on the West Coast. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's true. Also true. But it wouldn't be wild cards if I didn't anticipate it would be three hours long and it went four and a half. So as All you right. guys are heading back to town, what is yeah. the plan? Before, okay, well, we, we're gonna need to find somewhere to stay for the night or stay out in the woods like Jerry suggests, but I, 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 I think that a good place to start will be checking out some of those construction sites and maybe breaking into the old empire place. If they were running some sort of racket out of there, there, maybe there's going to be some sort of evidence. We could find something about where they went. I don't know. If they were following any of the protocols, they hopefully had some records. I agree. I think that's the best place for us to go. Okay. So you guys are heading back to town and you're going to look into the, uh, the Empire Rail office? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it takes about another hour uh, for you all to head back to town. And uh, just as you estimated, about the time that you walk your horses into the town limits, the sun is uh, all but setting in the sky. Um, the town seems curiously empty. Uh, there's, there's hardly any signs of activity already. It seems like they shut up pretty early here. You see one or two people kind of, kind of walking uh, down the street, but uh, no one walking alone and everyone who is seems bundled up and in a hurry to, to get indoors. There is kind of a, a strange feeling in the air as the, as the sun starts to set. The night seems very dark out here in these desolate, isolated plains. And you can't really blame these folks for not wanting to be out too much at night. All so right. where first? Feels like there's a Maybe spirits about in this town, if you catch my drift. Well, I ain't much one for superstition, but it is probably going to get cold, so. Whether or not you're much for them, they're for you. Yep, yeah, well. Well said, I think. Uh, maybe we go to the, uh, to the rail office and just sort of set up camp there. Yes. Sounds good to me. It is technically ours, so that's that's a good point. Okay. All right, so you guys uh, ride over to the rail office. Uh, what do you want to do with the horses? Do you want to return them to the stables or just kind of tie them up to a hitching post uh, on mean, the main street somewhere? And They were checked out for us by Claude. I mean, is, we can have them as long as we need them, right? Might as well like hang a, on to them. Is there like a hitching post near the Empire Rails? Yeah, most office. definitely. Uh, there's one. There's one uh, out by the uh, the general store. So that's just just one or two buildings down. You could hitch them up there. Okay. Are, are there other horses hitched in town right now that we can see? Not that you see. No. Okay. All okay. Right. So you hitch your horses and you head over to the Empire Rail Office building. And just as it was before, the place is dark and locked down. Is Curtain's there drawn. an obvious lock on the door or anything like that? Uh, there is actually a, uh, a pretty obvious, nice deadbolt lock on the door. Is it the sort that if I wanted, I could like take the butt of my gun and try and break off? I mean, if you hit something hard enough with something hard, uh, anything is possible. All right. Einstein said that. I guess let's give that a go. Okay. Uh, give me a, uh, it's a fighting roll. Well, um, Maybe Cherry should do this. Are you stronger than I am? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, I she's fighter. the strongest of us all. <laughs> I, I know you're, you're a fighter. You're good at fighting. So maybe maybe yep. Cherry should do this. I can do that. So uh, what are you going to do, Cherry? 
I'm gonna punch it. You're just gonna, <laughs> are you gonna punch the lock normally or are you going to use your fist of iron? Might as well use fist of iron. I mean, to a man with a fist of iron, every problem <laughs> is something that can be solved with a fist of iron. So uh, you walk up to the door, Cherry, and grasp your amulet and start focusing your chi. Can I get a focus roll, please? Yes. Ooh, I aced it. All right. Oh, yeah. I got a 10. A 10, Hell a success yeah. with a raise. So, Cherry, be sure to spend your power points, but you feel your chi energy flowing much more easily than it was when you tried to summon it up earlier, and it surges with strength. You feel your fist humming with the energy that you have summoned up, and you're going to try and just bash the lock in? Yeah. Give me fighting. I aced it. Okay, you can't uh, you can't do uh, exceptional damage to uh, an object, but you did hit it. So go, ahead, go ahead and roll damage and add four for your fist of iron. Wow! Hell yeah! You did succeed with a raise. This one. Okay, that's a thirteen. A thirteen. Yeah. Um, the the three of you kind of like cluster up around the door while Cherry walks up and summons her chi, and then before any of you are ready for it, she just lashes out quickly, brutally, and accurately, and just smashes the lock on the door through the door, and you hear it shooting out into the empty room beyond and just hitting the opposite wall and landing on the floor. Uh, that lock is gone. We will not be able to relock it. I hope that's all right. I uh, suppose uh, we don't have a choice, but I, I'm fine. That's, that's no, fine. We didn't have good. the key anyway. That's good, right. Good work. Uh, good work, Cherry. I know. Solid. I'll open the door. Solid work. All right. So, Ransom, you, you push the door open, and as it creaks in, you are all met with the darkened interior of the abandoned Empire Rail office, and abandoned it certainly is through the failing light of the setting sun streaming in through cracks in the curtains. You see a room that is largely empty and unfinished looking. The building itself is finished, but inside there's not much to this place. A couple of desks have been, have been set up facing some walls, uh, and uh, uh, there's some filing cabinets in the back, uh, one or two trunks just kind of strewn about, but everything seems a bit haphazard. It looks like the kind of operation that people might have if there were only a few people in an office designed to eventually hold many more. Um, but everything seems quiet and still and dusty. I kind of wonder what kind of trouble a small contingent might have gotten into that would have turned the entire town against them. That? Yeah. It just seems like they left just like they said they just well, decided they didn't want to do the job anymore let's get a lantern lit and see if we can find some documents find any evidence of them being here well i can help with the light yeah i don't believe any of you have the lantern lit but um cherry <laughs> um you did already successfully cast that with the rays um, you didn't already add on the modifier for glow, but if you go ahead and spend an extra power point now, I'll mm -hmm. say that you can just use the residual energy that you stored up because you rolled so well to go ahead and light that fist. Okay. What color does the energy of your chi light up the room? I think it's like a, a white gold color. Okay, not, not a soft yellow then. No. <laughs> it's, See, it's legally distinct. <laughs> so, uh, you, your fist begins to glow a very soft golden white, and in the light of uh, Cherry's fist, uh, you all can see shadows dancing in this place, but it is a bit easier to look around, if well, indeed that is what you are willing to do. Much, much better. Thank yeah, you, Cherry. Look. Thank you. All right. And, no, no offense to the, the magical fist light, but if we do find a lantern in the place, we will probably light that. Well, give me a notice roll, everyone who is searching around. There you go. There's that shiny fist. Whoa, cool. <laughs> nice. It's much like that. Oh, I used it. Oh, then I didn't. You've got about like a good 30 seconds of light here from that, um, unless you want to spend more power points to keep it lit, Cherry. 
It's going to be one PowerPoint for about every 30 seconds. I'll, I'll keep it lit for like a minute or two if we need it. OK. Um, so what did you all get for your notice rolls? 12. 12 two. for you, a success with two raises, a two for Ransom, and a wow. two for Wheeler? I got a six, actually. You got a six. You got yeah. a success. Um, Cherry, did you make a notice roll, or are you just being yes. the light source? No, I did. I got an eight. An eight, a success with a raise. All right. So you spread out and start looking around. Um, Ransom, you are distracted by a noise from outside, and you kind of move over to the window and just twitch the curtain open to see uh, what it was that you heard. It seems like it was maybe just one of the horses hitched up down the street fighting against their bridle, but all the same, you decide to stay here by the window and just keep an eye out on the street and make sure uh, nothing comes up and catches you all unawares. Um, Wheeler, was that, what, what did you say you rolled, an eight? Uh, I got a seven minus one, so six. Okay, okay, I was just making sure you remembered to do your minus one. Um, I did, I did, yes. Wheeler, you start looking around, um, and you can tell that uh, this place is covered in dust. It looks like it hasn't been opened or, uh, or, or, or lived in for quite some time. However, it does look like there are some footprints and boot prints in here that are not quite as deeply caked in, in dust and dirt as... Uh, as the rest of the place. So perhaps there was someone in here uh, more recently, but it's hard to tell. Uh, what did you get, Eldon? 12. 12, and then what did you get, um, Cherry? Eight. An eight. Cherry, um, as you look around, just uh, keeping your fist held aloft to look about in the light from it, um, the light from the sun and the light from your fist kind of interact in a strange way as you walk through the place and you see light shining in from outside of the building, just failing sunset light. You go over towards the desk in the back uh, of the room set up against the wall and you see a hole in the wall uh, just above the desk that light is shining down through. It looks very much like a bullet hole to you. And Eldon, as you see Cherry's uh, focus go over there and she's investigating that bullet hole, from the soft light cast from her fist, you see down beneath the shadows of the desk, the shadows down there have been illuminated somewhat. A crumpled piece of paper seems to be down there beneath that desk. I'll go over, lean down and pick up that piece of paper. You lean down and pick up the crumpled piece of parchment and um, it is, dry and brittle in that way that paper that has gotten wet and then dried often is. It's also discolored as well. And as you um, unfold it and kind of smooth it out on the desk uh, while Cherry, I'm guessing, holds up her fist to help uh, you read by the light of it, mm -hmm. um, it appears to be a, a brief note uh, dated for about two months ago. And in a scrawled hand, it reads, so far, I've seen neither hide nor hair of Goss and the other employees. It seems that Goss has lived up to his unsavory reputation. Although there seems to be no love in Flat Edge for Empire Rail, I was told that if I needed answers to any of my questions, I should... Sp and there, the message stops. And Underneath that on the paper, you see dark, rust-colored, discolored stains. That appears to be the liquid that got this parch parchment wet and dried. Well, it looks like this little uh, letter writing session didn't end well. No. And who was he writing it to? Maybe just leaving a report. I mean, if the telegraph had already gone down, maybe he was trying to get a message back to Empire. We got to figure out who even wrote this, though. Right. See if there's any more signs of blood around the office. Um, there are no more signs of blood that you were able to see, but Cherry, did you share what it was that you found? 
Yeah, yeah, I would share that as well. Um, and that and uh, Wheeler, what what you saw, uh, the more recent activity over the uh, over the dust is uh, all that you're really able to discern. Hmm. So someone's been here recently. There's a gunshot that went off, um, and a letter was written. All right, what does this mean? Well, they mentioned Goss. They mentioned he was unsavory, which means that either the real Goss, or if it was a fake Goss, was the one leading this pack of men. Mm. Not much to go on. I think we have to check another construction site. Maybe so. Well, they I don't want to take a closer look at that bullet hole. Yeah. Oh. Well, once, once Cherry points it out. And I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Ransom, what oh. were you about to say? I was just going to say it might be a little late for us to look at the uh, construction sites right now, but... Uh... Honestly, it might be the best time for us to go look at them. Yeah, I mean, bingo. if the workers are out there, they probably won't be that excited about seeing us. Yeah, I figured you were going to say that. All right. Um, yeah, I, is the bullet hole... So this is this is something I was going to do before, but this is to get me to look closer at the bullet hole. But is it where the paper was found? Is it by the desk that the paper was found in? So there's the desk uh, on against the back wall. Beneath that was the crumpled note that uh -huh. Eldon found. Above that desk on the wall is the bullet hole. Okay. Ah, well, then yeah, so picture, I will, it? yeah, it does. So yeah, I'll look at the bullet hole. Okay, give me a notice roll. Uh, it's a four. A four is a success. Um, Ransom, you've seen your fair share of bullet holes. And as you go over to investigate, you you call Cherry over and tell her to bring her fist in to, to light it up just a little bit longer. At this point, Cherry, that is going to be about uh, two minutes worth of use for your fist. So that's going to be four additional power points. Um, we haven't found like a lantern or anything that we can You haven't. No, this place actually seems curiously bare. Hmm. Um, it does indeed look like someone stripped all the supplies and, and left just hardly anything behind. Ransom, as you look, you can tell based on the way the wood has splintered that this shot went from the inside out, not the outside in. Well, that's curious. I haven't, I don't know what, is there a window here that they could have seen? It's just a wall? Um, it's just this wall, but as you, as you sit down there and, and look through the bullet hole, you, you realize you're about, uh, chest height with the wall crouched down in front of the desk and Ransom, you, you look back over your shoulder to the open doorway behind you and it okay. paints a little bit more of a picture. Yeah. All right. Well, looks like, uh, you don't want to be sitting at this desk and have someone pissed off at you. Yeah, but who did it? Was it one of these townsfolk or Goss and one of his men? Well, clearly they did it without knowing what was on the letter. They shot them in mid-writing, so. Hmm. I mean, that looks like they were probably trying to stop this person from getting the word out about him. But who is Goss? Doesn't seem like he has much of a reputation. Or, I, I mean, it sounds like he has a reputation, but it's not one you want. Right. And savory. Ransom, there's nothing else you can find out about these people using, I don't know, any of your little tricks, is there? Uh, that would entail me talking to someone I would rather not talk to right now. Black, right. Um, An old friend. You have a friend here? You know, let's call it a night. Let's just look at the construction sites and just go on, and he'll walk out of the room. <laughs> okay. Cherry does have a D4 and smarts. I feel like now's a good time to bring that up. <laughs> um, so now you notice that? You Jeez, kind sweet. of look around a bit ransom and then sort of not wanting to get into an awkward conversation, mosey out back towards the door. So I heard you say you wanted to check out... Uh, one of the construction sites, the, yeah. the unfinished building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Since uh, we were told that was going to be an interesting place. The most um, immediately evident site of note is that one unfinished structure at the end of the street across the way from the saloon that you saw as soon as you got off the, the rail platform. And as you step out into the street, the the sun indeed has, has 
pretty much all but set. There's just very dim twilight light uh, filtering down around Flat Edge right now. Uh, and still, the street is uh, essentially quiet and barren. You hear nothing but the endless whistling of the wind across the prairie. Heading over to the site? Let's go. OK. Uh, the four of you creep over there. Now, you are going to be uh, at a, a slight illumination penalty here. Um, Well, uh, good light we... again. No, no, uh, no. Uh, actually, Cherry, I, I can handle this. I have a solution here. Uh, I can just whip up a, uh, a, a thing I call a, a ever lantern. Uh, uh, well, it doesn't last forever, but it'll last a little longer than your fist. Um, so I would like to uh, make a gadget that can cast light. Okay. Uh, yes, light. Uh, so, uh, let's see, and I have to use three power points to do so, because I'm using a modifier on it. Okay. Uh, so I'm at 17. Okay, let me make my roll. Uh, that's garbage. I'll use a Benny. A Benny to re-roll for Wheeler. I'm doing so bad with these rolls. Yeah, it's different not having all that extra credit or cursed Spanish gold around, huh? I mean, definitely, for sure. Uh, that is a seven minus two, so five. Five, yes. okay. Wheeler, you pull the, the glass lenses out of your back that you used from earlier, and you also See. sprinkle some sort of unknown dark powder from a vial in your in your pack on them and start grinding them together while you wrap them up in wire. And once again, you touch the other end of that wire to the contraption that you wear on your head, and it starts to softly <laughs> There we go. Break out All into right. a glow like you're holding a lit light bulb uh, that is no longer connected to your hat, just glowing on its own in your hand. All right, this this sort of this ought to do the trick. How long will that last? Uh, it will last ten minutes. Okay. Yeah, you guys have uh, ample time to look around with that. Very so, nice, Wheeler. Thank you. It looks like we can uh, both light up the room when we want to. Back. I cannot imagine why your colleagues wouldn't want to work with you. Well, this is one of my more normal inventions, actually. I wanted to use teeth to power it, but they thought that was a little strange. All right, uh, let's stop gawking at Wheeler's doohickey and go what we're doing to do. I stand okay. by my statement. Doohickey. So uh, the four of you head over to the unfinished building site, and you start looking around. Uh, half of the walls have been built. They come up around... Uh, chest height to an average man, and, and you're able to, to look inside uh, as Wheeler holds up his light. Can all of you give me a notice roll, not modified by the darkness, since Wheeler has taken care of that. Although, Wheeler, okay. if you're making a notice roll, remember, you got grit and dirt in your eyes. I do remember. I will always remember. I got a three. I also a three. A three. I got a two. A two. Seven. A seven. <laughs> All right, so um, the three of you who failed your roles, as you're looking around here, it's hard really to see much of anything because again, as the wind comes blowing through, that overpowering stench just makes your eyes water and, and you see and hear flies buzzing up uh, from the ground nearby as the wind comes disturbed by the rushing of it. Um, it's hard to do much, but just try and clear your sinuses of that foul odor. Ransom, peering over the wall as you see your friends being uh, struck gagging and retching by the smell, you see what looks like in the middle of the plank floor, an area of the wood that looks a little bit different. It looks newer than the rest of the wood of this site. Clearly this unfinished building has been standing here for quite a while unfinished. Most of the wood is weathered and worn, but there is a small area of the floor that looks off colored, looks somewhat new and not quite as aged. I think there's something in the middle of the floor there, like some sort of trap door or something like that. Okay, bring, bring, bring the light over here, Wheeler. Uh, coming, coming. Are you guys kind of like picking your way through into the interior of the of the building? Yeah, yeah, going to kind of. All right, it's not that hard. Way. There's open gaps you can just sort of walk through. Um, and then I'm going to take it closer. I'm going to kneel down to that patch that looks different. 
You kneel down and under Wheeler's light, you can see that there appears to be a seam of wood and it looks like uh, this discolored wood, this newer wood that hasn't been quite so weathered is just kind of resting in place on the ground. It doesn't appear to be fixed uh, or attached in any way. All right, let's see what's under here, shall we? And be my guest. He'll lift it up. You reach down and lift it up, and you are rewarded with a swarm of flies and a oh. wet, warm rush of rotten stench that wafts up from underneath these floorboards. Ooh. Not again. Ugh. It is easy to see now that the odor in this town of cow patties baking in the sun was strong enough to cover up the much more rich and spoiled odor of human flesh rotting underneath these floorboards. You see a pile of bodies thrown together in what looks like a mass, a mass grave swarming with flies in various states of decomposition and decay. I need a fear roll oh. from all of you, please. And that is going to be at a minus two. Now, will that be uh, adjusted by your uh, grit? And will you be making guts rolls? No, guts and grit are nowhere to be found as skills and an additional statistic in Deadlands. Instead, guts and grit are edges now. And one of you, I believe, has oh. the guts edge. How Ransom, you? you get a free reroll on all fear-based spirit rolls. The rest of you must stick with what you got. That's gonna be a spirit roll at a minus two. Oh, spirit roll, okay. Yes, question? Nailed it. I got a five. You got a five, okay. <laughs> uh, I got um, a uh, 12. A 12, all right. But it's a 10 okay. with the minus two. Gotcha. And that was with the minus two, right, Cherry? Yes. Okay. I got a six. A six, okay. You managed to hold it together as well. Ransom. I'm going to use a Benny. You already used your free reroll? Oh, right. I get a free. God, we just talked about that. We just <laughs> said that. <laughs> Moments ago. Ransom. Dang it. Nope. Still got the same result. Okay, so, yep, now you can use a Benny. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Uh, I got a one. Uh -oh. That's uh, that sounds like a failure there, Ransom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm gonna need you to roll a d20 for me. Oof. You know I didn't he, take d20s out, so you can't. He make did me lift roll that him. floorboard. So. <laughs> yeah, we're he always throwing off when we have to go to the d20. He was the first one to see it. Yeah, makes sense. Six. A six. Okay, one moment while I pull up the fear chart here. You'd think that I would have uh, had this already queued up and ready to go, but who knew anyone was going to get scared in a Deadlands game? <laughs> I figured you just wrote that chart so you would know what it is. A six. Um, you are vulnerable. You will remain vulnerable until the end of your next turn. So I'll, I'll let you know when it is you are no longer vulnerable, Ransom. You, you just kind of gag and retch and you push back from the horror of those rotten, bug-eaten, maggot-infested, unseen eyes as you, as you just let the, uh, the floorboards fall back down and collapse, covering up the scene of carnage from down below. And as that happens, as you all step back, gagging and retching from the horror that you saw beneath the floor floorboards, you hear a voice from out in the street. Empire Rail, come on out here. Um, All right. You can Everybody. look out uh, into the street. The, the walls are not completed. We do what that. Do, what do we see? You see that young, gaunt and sad looking individual from Quincy's uh, ranch. Matthew, the one that seemed to make Quincy so nervous and seemed to be nervous himself. And he is standing out there in the middle of the street, in the darkness, in his threadbare clothing, but he is now wearing a gun belt at his hip. And you see the handles of two revolvers sticking out from each side of his waist. Come on out. Ain't no use in hiding. Get I just want to talk. Everybody. 
Well, we weren't hiding. We were uh, investigating, first off. Yeah. Yeah. I could tell you was investigating, and you didn't know well enough to keep your fool noses out of things. So now it's come to this. Whichever one of you is best with a gun, I'm calling you out. I raise my hand and kind of give everyone like the stand back gesture. Everybody knows that this is like my like place to be. If, if you get called out, I'm the guy. Yeah, I think we all just slowly turn and look at you. <laughs> I walk out and I just go out into the town. Well, looks like you got two guns. Seems a little excessive, don't it? The one's a backup. One's all I'm gonna need. Now I, I call for someone who's who's good with a gun, who can fight, not not some man who's missing an arm. Oh, you are going to regret those words. He well, doesn't seem to be. He doesn't actually seem to be trying to rile you. He 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 seems he seems uh, upset in some way. Son, if you're trying to make a name for yourself, I think you're making the wrong name here. I ain't trying to make no name. Now, are you the one who's going to stand for the rest of your dirty empire compatriots over there, sir? Yeah, I think I'm the one. Dirty? What? How dare he? He's the one living in this filthy town. It's okay, <laughs> Wheeler. He can say whatever he wants. Yeah, the man's yeah. put his life on the line. You got to respect that. So this has happened before to all of you. So you know... And most people living out in the Western frontier know that there is a sort of ceremony to these sorts of things. This is a contest that has been called and answered between two individuals and their guns will do the arguing for them. Now, the rest of you can get involved should you choose, but just know that that would be considered cheating and is not good to do openly. So will you stand by and watch as Elden acts for all of you? I have you, can always full change, you can always change your mind later. I have full confidence in Elden's ability to take down this ruffian. I mean, I don't think that Cherry would think to cheat. That just isn't in her mind, but maybe if she sees that that is what you're supposed to do, she'd switch, but probably not yet. Okay. Eldon would not encourage anybody to cheat for him. Okay. Eldon, you right. know I've, I never helped you win, win a gunfight, so best of luck to you, and if anything happens to you, I got your back. Ransom, you know nothing can happen to me. I can't die until I beat you at cars. <laughs> Quite so. Such Enough conviction. talking! Come on out here and let's get this over with. I don't know why you're in such a rush, boy. I'd like to know the name of the man that I'm about to put in the ground. Fallon. Eldon Fallon. Fallon. And yours? Fallon. Matthew, right? Wait, wait, wait. Fallon, one arm. I heard about you. Maybe you, you heard about some other Fallon with one arm. No, no, no. I heard about some, some trick shooter done shot off his own arm. You, you used to be good, right? I am good. I used to be very, very good. Well, let's see if your skills have survived the absence of your appendage. My name's Matthew Cooper. All right, Cooper. And I just want to start by saying, I don't want to do this. <laughs> but I'm gonna. Well, I can't quite say I ever really want to kill anybody, but uh, if I'm being entirely honest, I can't say I don't enjoy it either. All right. And with that, the two of you stand out in the street and square off. Now, 
Wheeler, your light is still lit. Will you be using that to illuminate the street for these gentlemen, or will you let them fight in the relative dim darkness of twilight? Uh, Eldon, it's your call. Uh, whatever you, you'd like me to do with this. He can put his light down or no, it makes no difference to me. Put it up. If you're gonna kill somebody, you gotta look him in the eyes. Oof, well said. Well Fair said. Enough. Don't aim for the kneecap this time. Aim for the head. Calling us dirty. <laughs> now, I am one who hates to spoil the tension of a moment, but seeing as how we are about to do a good old-fashioned duel using the new Deadlands rules, let's go ahead and break this down really quickly. You have a deck of cards there, yes, Elvin? Sure do, yeah. Okay. Ordinarily, we would be dealing from the same deck, but due to our pandemic isolation, we're going to have to... Uh, do things a little differently here. I will be drawing from the same deck that I've been dealing initiative for. No jokers have been dealt yet, so I will not uh, be, I haven't shuffled any of it yet. Okay. There are two jokers to be drawn in here, but you've got two jokers just as well. So uh, I suppose both of us are going to be very, very surprised by the results of this. So we're dueling. You stand in the middle of the street and we each take one whole card from the deck. Which don't we don't show, share with each other, right? Don't show it to me. We'll just take a look at it. Now, if you have any modifiers to your whole cards, now is the time to do it. And you have the duelist edge, I believe. Is that correct? I sure do. I have duelist, which means that I get two extra whole cards in a duel. So go ahead and draw those now. This young man does not have duelist, so he will just take the one. This is gonna happen in three rounds. In both the first and the second round, I am going to deal action cards to both of us. We will act on those action cards. On your turn, you can attempt to test your opponent. You can attempt to cast a spell on yourself or do any other action you would like to do except for attack. Now things work a little bit differently in a duel. If you distract or make your opponent vulnerable, that's going to last until the end of the third round and it does stack. So if you spend both of your actions to make your opponent vulnerable and you succeed, when it comes time to swap lead, you'll be working with a total plus four. Woohoo! Nice. So. Can I ask a question that wasn't covered in the rules that I saw? Please do. Am I, like with these whole cards, they're not action cards, right? They will, your whole card, your best whole card is going to be your action card when it's time to draw in the third round. But I guess my question is like, they can't be redrawn with binnies or anything like that. Not these, but there is a way to change your whole cards. Uh, if you succeed with a raise yep. on your test against the opponent, you can either make them discard a card at random or draw a new one for yourself. Okay. Oh. At the moment, Shall he's only got one, right? He does only have one. Shall we try this out? Let's do it. Round one. Now again, if anyone else wants to try and support Eldon or test Matthew or do anything else untoward, you can. But just know that it's cheating and you shouldn't be caught. And if you want to be honorable, you shouldn't do it at all. But you can. You ready for action cards, Eldon? I'm ready. Eldon, a jack of diamonds. Matthew, a queen of spades. Ooh. Now this you can spend a Benny to get redrawn if you'd like. I will, I'm gonna spend a Benny to redraw that action card. All right, Eldon, you spend one of your Bennies. And I actually get to, to redraw two action cards now because I have the quick draw uh, edge. That's correct. Now, Eldon, you have a jack of diamonds. Would you like to keep the 10 of spades or the king of diamonds? Ooh. Ing, that's what I wanted, baby. King yeah, of Diamonds yeah, baby. puts you one up on the queen. Eldon, the first move is yours. All right. Eldon just kind of looks him over and goes, so you got an arm you like better? Right arm, left arm? Most people choose the right arm, but uh, I don't know. Some like the left. I'm just saying if I'm going to blow a limb off, I like to be courteous about it. 
All right, this sounds like a test to me, yeah? I was hoping it would be an intimidation test. Sure, I can see that. Go ahead and give me an intimidation roll. Oh, I aced it. All right, that's an eight. Let me go ahead and deal Matthew his two bennies. Uh, an eight. This will be opposed by his spirit. Do you want to keep it? Yeah, I'll keep it. All right. You got a five and a two. That is a failure. I'm going to spend one of my GM bennies to re-roll that. That's still a five. I'm going to spend one more GM Benny to re-roll that. Five's the best he got. It's not a success with a raise, but it is a success, Eldon. So do you want to make him distracted or vulnerable? I'm going to make him vulnerable. Vulnerable. All right. So you say that to him, ask him to pick his favorite arm, and you see him get, you, you see a strange expression cross his face, and you seem to have shook him a little bit. Now it's his turn. Sir, you can take whichever arm you want, but it ain't gonna matter because you ain't fast enough to get the drop on me. Of that, I guarantee you. Now, two things are gonna happen here. The first thing is going to be him intimidating you. Okay. At a minus two. Wh why, why is he at a minus two? I'll tell you in a moment. Okay. Uh, that is a critical failure. Oh boy. That is a critical failure. And uh, <laughs> oh boy. offhand, I am not quite exactly sure what happens here. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say, since he crit failed, he remains vulnerable and I will give you the ability right now to draw another whole card if you'd like. You can't make him discard his because you have to still have one in your hand at the end and this is the only one he's got. Hey, I'll draw another. All right. Go ahead and draw another whole card for yourself. Alrighty. His words float out to you, but they seem a little bit hollow and a little bit nervous. Maybe his, maybe your reputation is bothering him a little bit more than he thought. The second thing he does, as he says that, his hand just sort of floats over the gun at his, at his side. And you feel like for just a moment, one second here, it's like the sun is glinting off of his gun. Oh. Uh, I'm going to spend a Benny to re-roll that. I'm going to spend my last GM Benny to re-roll that. I'm going to spend one of his Bennies to re-roll that. Oh my. Six minus two is a four, finally. The sun glints off his gun and the light of it just kind of hits you in the eye, which is strange because the sun is not out or shining right now. Ransom, you get kind of a prickling sensation on the back of your neck. And Matthew just kind of smirks a little bit in the light being cast off of Wheeler's gun. That was round one. Round two, ready, Elton? I'm ready. Ace of spades, it looks oh, like, yeah. for Elvin Fallon. Keep, I mean, obviously, I'll keep that. For Matthew, <laughs> a three of hearts. Uh-oh. Okay. He is already vulnerable and remains so until the end of this. Eldon, what would you like to do next? I, I want to look at him and uh, I, I want to... I want to see that he's going for his gun and be like, Oh, so you got your hand near your gun. Why, well, you're not confident you're going to get it there in time? And I'll hold my <laughs> one hand up by my head. Okay. I was hoping that could be noticed, but I guess intimidate would also potentially work. Um, I mean, it feels more like a taunt to me than that's anything true, else. But I don't have yes. taunt, <laughs> so that's really bad. I mean, I could say it's intimidation if you add that you are looking at him with a steely gaze this entire time. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I, I I will look at him. Yeah, as I'm doing it, and I just kind of like. I'll make a little finger gun and just be like. 
Okay. All right. Yeah. Now we're intimidating. Make now your you're roll. you're flirting with him. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's, there's a little bit of like, hey, if you're going to kill somebody, you, this is when you really know somebody. Make your intimidation yeah, I roll. Guess so. And he is vulnerable. So you're at a plus two with this. Whoa. Ah. This guy's good as dead. All right. That's a seven. A seven? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you want to keep it? This will be opposed. Yeah, I've just got one more Benny left. Okay. Um, so I'll keep it. And here we go. He crit failed. Oh, oh yes! yes! Boom! Wow. Ha -ha! Wow. The dice are finally against you, JCC. So I, I <laughs> again, on our side now. <laughs> I again will say that you're getting under his skin. Your confidence in the face of this, after what you just saw underneath those floorboards. I mean, he's all but said he's responsible for putting those people there. And yet you are still staring him down. It's getting to him. So you can draw yourself another hull card if you'd like. And he, would you like to make him distracted or vulnerable? You know, I already made him vulnerable, right? So I'm going to make him distracted this you time. You could make him double vulnerable I if sure you would could. like. Do, 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 double. The way I see it, <laughs> like, I'm already pretty good at shooting people. So... Vulnerable is nice, but like, if he does beat me in the whole card somehow, like, let's make him worse at it. Okay. All right. You make but him. I also got a raise, right? No, you didn't get a raise. I, I'm saying he crit failed on his response, so you get to draw a whole card in addition to. But uh, I still got a seven, so that was a success with a raise. No, he, he crit failed. So essentially yes it's a success with a ray it's the same it's the same effect no matter what you draw an extra hole card and you okay, make him yes. either distracted or vulnerable just clarifying but I, but but if he had if he had more than one hole card i could have made him discard one correct but he ray. still just has the one right yikes it. better be a good one all right you drew your card yep he stares at you and you can see sweat breaking out across his forehead from the ghost light that Wheeler is holding up in the middle of the street. And yet, his attention just zeroes in on you, and he says, talk all you want, sir, but the problem is, and he points down at his gun, I got a bullet with your name on it. And as he says that, I'm going to spend my last penny to re-roll. Uh-oh. <laughs> that was my last penny. Oh, okay, that was a last penny look, not a, oh, what an ace look. <laughs> and he kind of gestures down to his gun, and again, Ransom, you feel that prickling of energy on the back of your neck bullet with your name on it stands out in your head that sounds like something that you would read in like a like a doc holiday dime novel maybe but something seems wrong and as he looks down at his side and looks back up he looks nervous eldon that's the end of the second round now eldon before we get to the third round i'm going to remind you of two things one if he draws first and you shoot him dead, that's self-defense. If you draw first and shoot him dead, that's murder. And you would know that. The other thing you should know is that the Reckoner Death takes great, great joy in these contests between gunfighters. And as such, until the end of this third round, Neither one of you can soak wounds from the other. Yep. <laughs> this could be a one session character. So <laughs> Eldon. Easily. Eldon. Are you ready to choose your whole card? I'm ready. He's just got the one, so why don't you go ahead and throw yours down first, Eldon? Boy, I don't feel as confident about this as I wish I did. Jack of spades. A jack of spades. I mean not terrible. Yeah. yeah, but he drew one card, and he's Jordan. Oh. Seven of hearts. So time slows down as that nervous look from the young man comes up to meet your eyes, but still, you see determination in his, and you see that he's going 
to go for his gun. And you both go for it, but you are quicker, Elden. So I'll ask you this. Are you going to go on hold and try and interrupt his action when he draws for his gun so that you can be the honorable man? Hey, because you gotta give the kid a fighting chance. That's you what do I have say. the quick draw edge, which gives you a plus two to your athletics attempt to interrupt him. Yep. Or are you just gonna take the wisest choice and fire first? Nope, I am, I'm going on hold and I am waiting for him to like draw and then I'm gonna shoot him. So shaking a little bit in the street and looking more uncertain than he has this entire time, he goes for his gun and pulls it out of his holster. And as he does in the light glinting off of Wheeler's light, Ransom, you see runes carved into the side of his gun. But it seems like they didn't help him much here. And he turns to the side and sights you, Eldon, and fires. So he is at a minus two because you made him distracted. Well, but, and so now I'm doing the agility to try and interrupt him, right? Yes, if you want to try and interrupt him, now is the time to do it. Yeah, so Eldon goes for his gun with pretty ridiculous speed and just pulls it out and tries to fire at him. Give me athletics. You're at a okay. plus two because of your quick draw edge and you're trying to interrupt, so you're gonna roll first. All right, so that's a seven. A seven? You have one yeah. Benny left. Do you want to keep it? Yeah, I'm going to keep it. And Megan, just so you know, you're muted. So if you're uh, saying comments or anything, we can't hear them. <laughs> Mostly doing a lot of, mm. okay, All right. But that's great. We want to hear that. You're going to keep little... the seven. Yeah, I wish it was a little stronger, but. He's at a minus two. You did distract him. So let's Come see on. if he's able to outspeed you. There's no way he'll get this. Come on. He aced it. He crit failed? I was like a crit fail smile. He did neither. Oh, okay. He just simply failed, Eldon. As the young man goes for his gun, you realize he's half a second too slow and half a second too late. And even with your one arm, you've got this one dead to rights. You go for your gun, pull it, and fire. All righty. He is vulnerable, so you will be adding a plus two to this roll. Make your shooting roll. So I'm actually adding a uh, plus four to this roll because I have a trademark weapon, my gun, which I've named Lefty. Okay. And uh, uh, I also have the uh, double tap edge because I'm just shooting one rate of fire shot, right? Okay, so you're gonna double tap him. Yeah. And you're gonna get a plus one to your, uh, to your shooting roll and a plus one to your damage. All right, make yep. your roll at a total plus four. <sighs> Call us dirty, will you? <laughs> okay, so that's, uh, well, that's five plus four, so that's nine. Nine. That should be a hit with a raise, right? That is a hit with a raise. So roll the damage for your gun and roll an extra d6. Which I believe should be, so it's total, it's three d6 plus one. Three d6 plus one. Well, and then plus two because soak. of my double tap. That's right, three d6 plus two. Two bullets, pow, pow! Rapid fire with your double action revolver goes sailing out through the night. Their muzzle flashes lighting up your face and the determination on it. Um, I'm gonna re-roll it with my last Benny. Last oh, Benny no. to re-roll that damage, make it good. Come on, so come I, on. I rolled 10, so 10 is what I'm at right now. That's not bad. It's not bad, no. This is better. Uh, so that's, that's 15 and one ace, so. Whoa, yeah, that's another ace. Kid. So that's 21 with an ace. Wow! Uh, so that's 23. 23 damage. 23 damage. 23 damage is a success with three raises. Uh, well, let me double check. 9, 13, 17, 21. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. A, a, a success with four raises. There we go. Wow. A success with four raises, Wheeler. You aim your gun and fire twice. <laughs> and the man pulls his gun out and falters. And the gun dangles from his fingertip and falls to the ground as twin blossoms of blood bloom on his shirt. And he looks down at himself and looks up at you 
And I say to him, I say, you never gave me an arm, so I just went center mass. You idiot. You stupid fool. I don't kill because I want to. I kill to keep him inside. And as he says that, the blood starts to flow copiously from the wounds on the front of his body, rushing down the front of him like a waterfall spraying out of him. And as they do, they, the blood flow sinks onto the ground and starts to puddle up and mass and swell and rise. And in front of your eyes, the rough outline of a man made of congealed blood appears in the street as Matthew's skin becomes white and his body becomes desiccated as all of the liquid within him retreats and spills out of him. And this figure in the middle of the street raises its sightless face up to you, Eldon, and all of a sudden explodes towards you in a geyser of hot, boiling blood which hits you immediately and wraps itself around you. And you all on the sides of the street no. hear Eldon screaming and boiling inside of this mass of swirling blood. I need a fear roll from all three of you. Oh. At a minus four. Oh my. Because as this happens, dark clouds cover the moon and a splash of lightning illuminates the sky. And all of a sudden your stomachs drop out from underneath you. Something has gone horribly wrong here. Make those fear rolls. You never like hearing the GM say all three of you when you're a four person party. <laughs> and a minus four. Minus four. Okay, I'm gonna re-roll that. I got a seven, I did it, I did it, I got a seven. Nice job, Wheeler. Wow. Yeah. I got Grant. a three. A three's a failure, Cherry. You got one more Benny. Yeah, okay, I'll try. Nope. That's a failure, Cherry. Ransom? I got a zero. <gasps> Did you use your free reroll? Yep. Would you like to use your last Benny? I didn't think I had another Benny. I'm showing you got one more. Oh. And uh... I would say bank error in your favor here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then I will <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely use my last Benny. Aced it. That's good. Aced it again. That's good. Oh, yeah. thank God. Okay, great. No, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, that's a 16. That's 12. Cherry, roll a d20 for me. Okay, let me find one. Here's one. While you find one. I did. Whew. I got a nine. A nine? Yeah. Uh, you two are made vulnerable by this, Cherry. You, you just step back completely surprised by what you're seeing. And eventually, and very quickly... Elden's screams cease. And this swirling fountain of blood just shoots up into the night sky, directly into the darkening clouds building over Flat Edge and vanishes from sight. And a form falls to the ground in the middle of the street. But that form is Elden, burned beyond recognition and lying motionless in the middle of the street. What do you all want to do? Elden. I'm going to run to Elden. Yeah, yeah better. Cherry, you can't run over to Elden. You just have to take a moment to to just process what it is you saw. Meanwhile, Ransom and Wheeler, adrenaline takes over, and you rush over to Elden. What are you doing? Uh, uh, I have my light. I'm going to see. Is, is he breathing? Is he alive? He doesn't appear to be. No, he, he is just covered in blisters and burns, and he is oh. not breathing. I'm oh I'm God. I'm just going to do uh, Elden. God. Damn it, wake up. Come on, you can you cannot be dead. What the hell was that? Uh, can I use my healing hat? My You can. Your Shapoa, your revitalizing Shapoa quasi immortality? Yes. As long as you activate it, you can place it on someone else's head. Yeah, uh -huh. I'll do that. This is gonna look a bit silly, but I'm going to do it. All right, you place hurriedly place your device around Eldon's head and you can feel the heat coming off of his body as you do. You strap it on and you activate it. Will you give me a roll, please? Weird science. I will. Weird science. Oh, this auto. Weird science, science. Uh, uh, is there a minus to this one? Nope. Okay, so I got a five. A five. A five. 
is a success. And a five would heal a wound. And it does. As you watch, your device goes to work and you see the revitalizing rays move through Elden's body and you see some of the burns Elden. and some of the boils and some of the skin that has been revealed, the, the raw flesh beneath the skin that was revealed by this burning torrent of blood start to patch over. But essentially, you're painting a corpse at this point, Wheeler. Elden draws no breath and does not seem improved. And as you go down and place your fingers on his neck, you feel no pulse. Oh, I'm sorry, Ransom. I, 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 I don't know what happened. I, 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 what, what was what was that? What happened? I. That must have been some awful spirit of some kind. Looking around, you guys, you see uh, faces at windows, candlelit uh, abodes from inside, and anytime you see them, the curtains twitch closed, but it appears you have an audience. And as you're standing there in the middle of the street with Elden dead and whatever that thing was rushed up into the sky and gone, you feel suddenly exactly how isolated you are. No train, no friends. No Elden, no answers to what is going on. And as your total aloneness sinks in, Elden's corpse sits up and begins to scream. And that is where we will end things tonight. Thank you all very much for joining us in part one of Deadlands Lawless to support the Deadlands Kickstarter currently ongoing from Pinnacle. If you had never experienced the Weird West before, I recommend you check it out. And if you are a veteran of the Weird West, I can guarantee you as one myself, you will find plenty to enjoy in this. Make sure you check out that Kickstarter. Enter exclamation mark Kickstarter in the chat. Follow that link. We want to say a big thank you to Pinnacle Entertainment for yes. having us partner up and put on this show and for being Yay. so gracious to be in the chat and answer questions. Uh, we want to say a big thank you to all of you for tuning in. And we hope that you will join us next Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific time here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show for the conclusion of Deadlands Lawless. We also hope, if you're interested, that you'll join us on Friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time here on the same channel for the series finale of Wild Cards ETU. We're so close. But if not, if not, if you don't want to know what the ultimate fate of the posse in Flat Edge, Kansas is, especially what is going on with Eldon Fallon, although I suspect for those of you who are veterans of the Weird West, you might have a small inkling but if you want to know more, I suggest you join us next week. Thank you again to all of you for joining us. Thank you to my players for being such good sports. Thank you. And one final thank you, thank you yeah, to thank Pinnacle you. and to Pine Box. I hope I did not misspeak when I talked about that Doomtown deal earlier, but hopefully one of the fine folks at, at, uh, at Pinnacle can help answer that question. Until next time, folks, we will leave you with finger guns. Whoa, pew, 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 pew.